Hey, everybody. Hello, Doug. Hi, Doug. Hey, hold on a minute. Guys, any comments in there? That was all I got. I heard Clemens. Ginger, are you there? I am. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. Mr. Mitchell. Good morning. Good morning. Oops, two L's. Uh, da -da -da -da. Lance. I'm here. Hello. Hello. R.I. Hello. Hello. Uh, da -da -da. Francesco. Hello. Hello. Tommy. Hey. Hey. Tamar. Oh, I don't okay. think I'm hey. I don't think I'm spelling that right, but I'll fix it later. Eric. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Christian. Hey Doug. Hey. Hey Heinz. Good day, sir. Good morning. Uh, Thomas. I'm here, yeah. Hello. Hello. I'll get it. I'll get it. There. <laughs> Mike. Oh, Mike, that's a mic yet. Hey, Christoph. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good. Hey, Mike. Morning. Hmm. Hey, Jim. Morning. Hey. Hey, Manuel, are you there? Hi. Yeah. Hello. And Brian, are you there? Brian Young? Yeah, sorry, muted, but here, no, no. thank you. It, is this your first time on the call? It is my first time on the call. Cool, do you give me a favor, and um, let me paste a link to the doc. If you can just put your company name in there on, on the list of attendees, if you want to be associated with the company that is. Okay, I'll perfect, we'll do, thank you. I'll just do it for a, a self thing. All right, Vinay, are you there? Hi, Doug, yes, I am. All right, one more minute, then we'll get uh, started. Doug? Um, yes. It's Oleg. Uh, where did you say I have to put it? Because uh, I don't know, if we, maybe we have already done it. So again, hey, I, I think I already have you in there, Oleg. OK. All right, cool. But I think you're good. But just, we'll check. I have you from Pivotal, is that right? VMware Pivotal. Same thing. OK, yeah. I, I wasn't sure what to do with you guys, so I just picked one. <laughs> well, I'm. Still pivotal because France is not yet being acquired. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Um, let's see. We are three after. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Let me make sure I'm not missing anybody. Oh, Kent. Hey, Kent, are you there? Oh, we don't have a mic for me. I'll catch up I'm later. All right. Let's go ahead. Um, no, it's worth mentioning about community time. Anything from the community people would like to bring up? All right, I'm not hearing any. So I think I mentioned this last time, uh, the TOC would really like to see us become a SIG, not just a working group under SIG app delivery. We had an initial meeting with them uh, Monday or Tuesday this week, I can't remember which one. Uh, and they gave some suggestions in terms of how to maybe tweak the charter a little. So I'm gonna take another pass at that. They, they still really seem eager for us to be our own little SIG because serverless is such a hot topic and they didn't want to, they don't want SIG app delivery unless they get too big either. So. I'll do my best to try to find the right wording and we'll see how that plays out. Um, okay, SDK. So just a reminder, we will have, oh, is there a question? Yes, sorry, I yeah. couldn't find my raise hand. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, can you, uh, I, I tried to follow some of the email threads on this differentiation between um, 
runtime and uh, SIG runtime and SIG apps. And could you just maybe talk about what the general consensus is going forward in terms of how the differentiation is, is being facilitated, like well, for cloud events? Uh, is, is that still that I'm assuming it comes, it would come under the SIG apps, is that right? And well, not the runtime? And, <laughs> or is it the opposite? <laughs> You're asking a really hard question, which is why we're struggling with this. So as best as I personally can explain it, and someone else can please chime in, as best as I can explain it, SIG runtime is more for things like Kubernetes, where it's base level infrastructural thing, low, low level type stuff, okay? SIG app delivery is meant to be, I think, a, a simpler user experience, which is why you're gonna see things like Helm show up there. If Cloud Foundry were to appear under CNCF one day, I'm not saying it should, I'm just saying as an example, Cloud Foundry might appear under there, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's meant to be a, simpler, a simplified developer experience, it'd be app delivery. It's all about delivering your application in the, in the easiest way possible. Now the, the challenge then comes into, how, well, how do you distinguish app delivery from serverless? Because well, serverless, you can focus on, oh, well, it's about, you know, functions as a service. It's about scale to zero. It's about pay as you go. And those are all true. As we've seen, the line between serverless, functions as a service, containers as a service, platform as a service is actually getting very, very blurred. And a lot of the stuff that we talk about in the serverless world nowadays can very easily be applied to, say, platform as a service, right? Because if you look at, say, something like Knative versus Cloud Foundry, if you ignore some things like the scale to zero stuff that Knative brings to it, they're actually very, very similar, right? And so the line between those two worlds of app delivery and serverless is very, very blurred. And that's why we're struggling with this, right? We, we can't come up with a crisp definition of what a serverless SIG is versus app delivery SIG, but we're gonna try. And to be honest, the wording we may have in there may end up being something along the lines of, we're gonna try to make an attempt to turn to, to to split the, the definitions, but in all reality, we're probably gonna have to take each project that comes to the CNCF on a case-by-case -case basis to see whether it's best fit for serverless versus app delivery. And there may not be a good rhyme or reason other than each one is a special snowflake that needs to have its own decision made. That's the best I could do. Right, no, no, that's very helpful. And also maybe if I could just, taking on that community time, just ask another question. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, I know we call this working group or the, the SIG working group as the, uh, the serverless working group, but we have, most of the focus has been on, you know, for example, the cloud, I mean, I think the last two months we focused on cloud events. So how is that distinction handled? Is there a separate SIG for the serverless or uh, this is, an, or do you just see this as a critical piece of the, uh, the, 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 the massaging ecosystem that is fundamental to serverless. So again, this is just my opinion, but the way I've kind of thought of it is <clears throat> until we become a full-fledged SIG, I've been kind of ignoring the question <laughs> because once we become a full-fledged SIG, I think there's going to be a, a fair amount of more um, uh, bureaucracy we need to deal with, for lack of a better phrase. And at that point, we probably will have to spin up a dedicated serverless SIG phone call that's separate from cloud events. Um, for the most part, we've been kind of lucky in that most of the work that's gone in the serverless working group has all been focused on one particular task, right? We don't have multiple things going on at the same time. However, if you look at the workflow stuff, that did spin off into a separate, not working group, but subgroup under serverless. And they even have their own phone calls and their own Slack channel, stuff like that. So, we can fork as necessary. It's just, we've been lucky in that for the most part, everybody who wanted to focus on the serverless side of things has said, okay, let's all focus on cloud events. And that's why we've only had one phone call, but we will spin up other phone calls as necessary. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Cool. Okay, any other questions or anybody just wanna chime in there to give alternative point of view? All right, thank you everybody. Um, okay, as I was saying, SDK call, um, uh, we will have one every week going forward, starting with this week. We did have one last week. I, for life of me, can I remember what we talked about? Um, did somebody who was on that call remember? Yeah, we, we, we talked about the, uh, the TypeScript. Oh, yeah. There was a... Yeah, that, that, that took up the whole call, didn't it, basically? 
Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we are going to continue that discussion today. If we have time on this call, we'll, we'll jump into it. If, um, if we don't have time on this call, then we'll just do it again on the SDK call. But um, there is a whole discussion about whether we want to keep the TypeScript as a separate SDK from JavaScript. Now, on last week's call, we agreed to create the TypeScript SDK repo as a temporary measure um, until we have a formal decision, just so we don't hold up those guys from getting their work done. Um, but if for some reason we decide we don't want it and we want to merge the two into one repo, we can kill off that repo. But that's a discussion for later in the call. Okay. And just a reminder, we will have the SDK call immediately after this one, even if this call ends early, we'll start it up. All right, uh, Timur, is there something you want to mention status-wise from the workflow subgroup? Uh, yeah, sure. We had our meeting with the Argo team, and I think Manuel, if you can just give us an update on that, because you can allow that. Sure. Yeah, so we reached out um, to Argo Slack and Alex Collins, uh, one of the founders, and uh, we had a meeting on Monday with 17 people attending. Um, three of them from Intuit it was Alex uh, Collins, then Ed Lee, and uh, Mukulika Kapas, the three of from Intuit that were most active in the discussion. And they seemed pretty interested in the idea to have a common standard language that is also not bound to the platform as uh, in Kubernetes uh, custom resource descriptors. So um, they are going to join us from our next community call and maybe also on our next primer discussion uh, starting again on, on Monday to drive forward a uh, common specification. And thanks to uh, Theomir's work, um, it, it seems that what Argo does in Argo um, workflows and Argo events is pretty much aligned with um, the capabilities of the current dot one release of serverless workflow language. Um, and we're pretty positive on finding some agreement with them. That'd be cool. Excellent, any questions? Yeah. If I may, just like we're doing the same now with the Brigade project. So we've started working on examples as well. Um, but I do want to ask you, Doug, like with the serverless SIG, like we're currently going through the Sandbox project proposal with the SIG app delivery. Um, does that have any implications or not with that process? I, you, you'd think it would. Um but I wouldn't worry about it until we figure out what we're doing with the serverless SIG. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other questions for the workflow team? All right, moving forward then. Just a reminder, um, while we, I do take attendance and we track these things, we've had a lot of new people join the group recently. I just wanna make sure everybody understands the reason we do this. We don't often take formal votes. We try our very, very best to get um, consensus for most decisions. However, obviously there will be times that we can't necessarily all agree and we have to take a formal vote. And the way voting works in this group is not through PRs and stuff like that because we don't have a, you know, a daily stream of PRs like a normal quote open source project would. Rather we do it based upon attendance and typically also it's associated per company. So what ends up happening is uh, I do take attendance, and that's why I ask for people to associate themselves with a the company. And each company has a primary and alternate. As long as one of those two people show up for the last uh, three out of four phone calls, then that company gets voting rights. Okay, so that's why it is kind of important for, for one for me to make sure that, or for you to make sure that I hear you on the call or say something in the, in the Zoom uh, chat, and I'll mark your attendance there. That's what the little asterisk means up here. Okay, also make sure that you have somebody who attends on a regular basis listed as your primary and alternate, right? So for example, let me pick on Red Hat for a minute here. For a long time, both of the Red Hat primary and alternate folks did not attend the call. Um, where is it, Red Hat? So I, I, I reached out to Lance and said, you may want to change that. So he became the primary this week. I have no qualms about changing it around as necessary. He didn't lose, you know, his his attendance like that. So right now they're green so they can vote. Um, the, only, the only constraint that we have in terms of switching these things around is if you end up asking to have the primary and or alternate change on a, on a weekly basis, because on every week a different person shows up, that's not within the spirit of things, right? We're trying to get people to show, the, the same person to show up on a fairly regular basis so that they have 
a continuity in terms of understanding what we're doing, right? Because we don't want people who show up just to get voting rights. Because first of all, as I said, we don't vote well very often. So voting rights really doesn't matter that much. And it's very rare that we actually need it. So as I said, you can change it around as necessary. It's just on a weekly basis, you're gonna get some eyebrows raised of that's thinking you're playing games and that's what we're trying to avoid, okay? Uh, Doug, quick question. Uh, yes. Actually, two questions on this on this sub subject. Uh, I actually see my name and no zero, no two, no three, uh, nothing there. So, uh, and we've been in the last three, four calls, three calls. Yeah. So reach anyway. out to me because yeah, Mark Fisher is your okay. primary for Pivot. Just reach out to me and I'll 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 bump you up to be primary and then you're good to go. Oh, Mark, Mark Fisher actually may be joining. I spoke with him like a few minutes ago. Um, but um, anyway, uh, that's not the bigger. My other question was probably more important. Um, sometimes there will be people like, let's say, subject matter expert who may be one off to join the call to discuss a particular PR or something, and or uh, and that may get into into a bind. Uh, but that person effectively doesn't have any voting rights because he just got in there for the first time. How does? I mean, maybe you just never encountered that situation before. No, so we do it. No, and so obviously this is an open call. Anybody is free to join. Um, right, right. That's, just, that's my point, yeah. Yeah, if they just show up once, that's fine. Actually, if you look, look, look down here, right, we have a whole bunch of people <laughs> who actually yeah. showed up once, and I, you know, way over here, I have little yeses for them. I keep track yeah. of them all in case they show back up again. Um, okay. And so that's, that's perfectly fine. It's just if they don't show up again or they're not associated with a company that shows up on a regular basis, they won't have voting rights, but it, it doesn't matter, right? They don't show up often enough that they really care. I will point out though, for some people like take Vlad, for, uh, pick on him. He is not associated with the company. He's, does his, he does his own stuff. So it is possible for people who don't want to be associated with a company, either because they don't have a company or because they're doing this on their own. They're not officially part of the company. They can right. show up as just self and that's fine okay. as well. And they will get voting rights. You can see we have four people right here. Okay. Okay. It, right. it's not a big deal i don't worry too much about this stuff as i said we don't I'm not i just kind of want yeah okay. yeah no i wasn't focusing on you it's just in general i know some people get right, a little right, nervous right. about this stuff but like i said it doesn't really matter we've had i think less than 10 votes total for the entire lifespan of cloud events so it's very very rare that we actually take votes which is i think a good thing okay but i did yes. want to mention it for people who, are, who don't understand what the heck we're doing <laughs> and why i care about so much about hearing about people from the attendance list all right, any questions on that? All right, now let's get into some real work. Um, so, so we talked about this last week and Fabio indicated that, actually let me show you the comments so you guys can read it yourself. He indicated that while this is a breaking change in terms of from a code generation side of things, it's not a breaking change for what's on the wire. And he, if I'm interpreting his comment here as saying that means we don't necessarily need to create a 2.0 of the Avro spec. So this is more of a, maybe an SDK impact kind of a thing or a coding impact kind of a thing. Um, if, you, if they're using the schema, it's my interpretation of it. I want to hear from other people in terms of what they think about that. Do they think that's a satisfactory answer for us not to have to worry about this being a 2.0? Or is he playing fast and loose with terminology here? I'm actually reading, so. Yeah, okay. And I will, I will pick on people if they don't want to speak up. Because <laughs> I know we have some, quote, standards type people who think about these things often. And you know who you are. This does not require a major version bump. Clemens, I want to pick on you. It's your price for not being on the call last week. Change ah, the <laughs> um, if I, I think this was the this this was to disambiguate the or to make clear that this is just the Avril encoded way of doing a cloud event and it is not the cloud event as it should be in memory, right? Um, so he's, th these are the sets of changes he's making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, he claims this does not affect what appears on the wire. I, uh, I believe that's true. 
Okay. Because the point of the schema is to avoid it is not to have the um, the names in the on the wire. So this sounds like it's more like impacting SDK or just customer coding stuff up type things, right? Yes. Okay. So so it needs it needs a version. It's it's a breaking change. Um, but it's not. It doesn't have wire impact. So, so either schema should. Um, well, when I'm I'm willing to trust professionals. <laughs> um, so so I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna question I'm not gonna question the statement if he if he says so, because I mean the easy the easy way to prove this is to basically serialize out in one with the one schema and then serialize back in with the with the other schema and see whether it breaks but i guess that that's um um so I, i'm assuming that it has happened i don't know ha huh. the way i read fabio's comment because it was a little confusing where here he says the pr does not change and then he says this breaks but the way i read it is the usage itself for somebody who expects something may break or will break, but on the wire, the context of this cloud event will stay the same. So I guess that's. Yeah. So, so I, I don't think it's breaking from the sense that it's fr from the, if, if it doesn't have wire impact, which I believe. Yeah. Um, it's not that I say, I know, it's just that I, I believe the theory, let's put it this way. Um, <laughs> then, 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 right? It, it, nothing breaks until you take on this. Um, until you take on the schema, right? It's up to you. So those two schemas, the old one and the new one, are compatible on the wire, which means right. you can now go and take this new schema, which is which can also be you know one point oh a, um, and. Uh, and that will that will work. What will, what they will do is it will for uh, the future and for um, everybody who takes on that schema clarify that whatever you co generate um, uh, is just the 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 Avro serialization of the cloud event, and it's not the the actual cloud event uh, object that you would um, get if you are taking the SDK. So this is it's effectively a clarification. So it's fixing a bug, and so therefore. Um, it's it's not a breaking change in that way. Yeah, I, I like the fact that you said it's a more of a bug fix. Um, yeah. Even though it feels like we're being a little bit generous with that. Um, I, I hey, agree. It's a, it's a standard excuse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, we'll, we'll do that. If we want to introduce a breaking change, we say, well, actually, it was a bug. We need to. <laughs> yeah, it's I, it's a it's a breaking change. It's it's a breaking change in the sense that, yeah, if you previously relied on the the Avro serializer spitting out a class with uh, that or or an object with that particular name, then yes, um, that is a breaking change. So that's why we, we need to have a new version number, but it's not a 2.0. I think that's the argument here. Okay. Is there anybody on the call that would look at this situation and say, we're we're kidding ourselves. This really needs to be a 2.0. Okay, not hearing I look that. At it, I look at it even more as like a sort of a standard scheme evolution case. I mean, uh, it's constantly used in messaging eventing apps where schema changes and we have a dynamic way of retrieving schema and applying a particular specific schema on the object that may have went through the schema evolution change. So, I mean, there may be like a different way of even approaching it, but maybe outside of scope of this discussion. But I mean, I don't see it as a, your classic breaking change, um, yeah. at least from my opinion. Uh, I see it more of a, as a developer, you know, there, there are breaking changes, but if it's a, it's not like something in production all of a sudden just crashed. I mean, it's something that will be discovered in my opinion, early in the development phase and once addressed, no longer an issue. Uh, Jam your hands up. Yeah, I think I was going to say the same thing, actually. Um, for me, a breaking change, I think, is really a, a change to the wire. Yeah, like, if you remember, we changed the JSON schema right up at, you know, I know we hadn't released 1.0 at that point, but we changed the JSON schema 
it didn't change the format on the wire, but it did change the way we represented it from a schema gen perspective. So that would have changed code. Um, so I, I would, I would tend to sort of let this one through uh, on the assumption that the wire format isn't actually changing. Uh, and I don't think I can comment on that. Okay. Anybody else have any alternate point of view on that? Okay. <clears throat> In that case, is there any objection then to approving this PR? All right. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Thank you. Um, hold on a minute. There we go. Okay. Next. So this PR, unfortunately, I, I meant to get it done Tuesday night, but I don't think I did. So I ended up doing it yesterday. So it's too soon to merge. However, I did want to have a discussion about it. In particular, Mike, you are still on the call, right? Okay, good. So uh, hold on a minute, let me hide comments first. So basically what I tried to do here was, I thought that the, I think, okay, I always get the, the, the P words mixed up. There's provider and producer. I think it was very confusing having both words in the spec and I tried to actually eliminate that. And what I then also tried to do was to talk about, and I stole uh, Klaus's idea of using a term called source class, which is sort of like source, but it's not as specific, right? So in the, in the cloud event source uh, world or, or usage, uh, the source actually gets down to maybe something like the actual bucket name if you have an object store. Source class is something that's a little bit more abstract in the sense that it's meant to represent the object store itself, not necessarily the actual instance of the thing inside the object store that produced the event. And that's why we, I use the word source in there, but then we call that a class to imply it's, it's related to it, but not quite the same thing. Um, however, it, it is meant to be a unique identifier for that thing. So if you actually look at an example down here, you see source class example.com, um, but the actual event itself might be example.com slash bucket slash foo or something like that, right? And what I wanted to then do was to show, when, if once you did that, if you took all the other properties that I think Mike defined and just showed them in a very pseudo YAML-ish type format, it's not 100% YAML because I, you know, the asterisks and question marks show whether it's, it's, it's cardinality and stuff. But I thought this gave a nice, very quick overview in terms of how things would actually appear if, for example, this were to appear in YAML on the wire. Um, ultimately, you probably would want to convert this to something more like JSON if JSON is the preferred format we want to support. But I wanted to take a step forward in terms of producing something that was a little more concrete than just a list of attributes that Mike had and show them in a format so people can understand what would the data model at least conceptually look like. And let me sort of pause there since Mike, you have your hand up. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I really don't like the word source class. I think it uh, implies um, abstraction. Like I immediately go to like the, uh, the idea of a class in a programming language, right? Mm -hmm. It's um, anyway. I, I don't. I put a comment on the PR. I suggested source system, um, but I like in in reality, this would indicate like a specific product that somebody is subscribing to events from. Mm -hmm. um, I was literally gonna complain with the same uh, class as a Java <laughs> developer. I was like, uh, what, and then what is example.com? That's really not a class. So let me, uh, I, as a late comer to the overall discussion, let me ask a stupid question. Um, example.com or whatever that down below that you, yeah, example.com, could it just be any kind of, I mean, because your documentation state uniquely qualified, unique, unique name. So it could be any kind of unique name, as long as it's unique, it is, or it should be of certain format, like a, you know, like a domain name or whatever. I think I think so. A couple of things to Mike's comment uh, about the name. Honestly, I I I'm okay with source system. I think that that actually probably is a better phrase for it. Um, I don't. I'm not married to the name. I just was really bothered by the two words to start with P, provider and right. producer being so close together. That was my biggest concern. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, to, what I'm, let me sorry, let me just answer the other one. The yeah. the second one is. We need to go through and make sure for all of the properties, um, what their actual types are, what the scope is. Now, my interpretation of this particular thing is that I believe 
cloud event source is a URI. Um, okay. And so I, I would assume this one would be a URI as well. And in terms of uniqueness, I think it just has to be unique within the scope of this particular dis uh, uh, discovery endpoint. That's, but so that's, then, my, that's my take on it. So then, again, maybe a stupid question. Why? Because I see that people don't like source system, source group. So source group is one suggestion. Uh, but source uh, uh, URI, I mean, go for a simple one. So the reason I, 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 it's funny, I think in the- I'm just throwing it out there to see if it no, no, sticks. That, no, it's all good. It's just, I think at one point in the, in the chat, I actually didn't mention using the word source there, but the problem was, I can't remember who it was, whether it was Mike or, or Klaus mentioned, that may be confusing for people because they may look at it and say, oh, it's a cloud event source. Well, it's not, right? right? And I don't want that confusion either, so. But I think it's important to think about where this would be displayed. So like I, my, my, Thought, your thought process here was that whatever whatever we call this string that it might show up in a UI for somebody to like drill down to oh I can pick events from my storage provider from my database provider from my audit log provider like they're going to be identifying it by the name that they know that system by yeah, yeah. and I, I, I can the source group the suggestion based on what I'm hearing yeah, I mean, we, we can we can rat hole on the name itself, but I, I'm. I think we should let Scott name it. <laughs> I know how much he likes naming things. Yes, but the other thing that I did change, and Mike, I wanted to make sure you you were aware of this, was in your in the current form of the spec, you actually have what I call description as sort of the main key as a, the human readable string, and I flipped it so that the machine readable thing um, is the URI. That way it's guaranteed to be the same, hopefully, and that's the thing you can search on. I didn't like using the human readable string as the search string because that could change over time, right? Companies get bought out or there's a fat fingered the name at one point, they need to rename it, right? That kind of stuff. Um, so I wanna make sure that you, were, that you noticed that and you didn't have any concern with that. Because later on when I do talk about samples, I talk about using the source class as the search string, not the description thing. Even though you could support searching on description, I thought that wasn't the primary use case. I think you probably want to support searching over multiple fields, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I thought I saw a hand go up there for a second. Oh, Thomas. Yeah, I was also looking for the unmute. I'm doing it with the <laughs> space bar right now. Um, <clears throat> Behind source class, you write unique identifier for producer, right? So I was thinking of why don't you name it either producer or producer ID? Producer is already taken. Yeah, no. but that, that's, yeah. that's what started this issue, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the producer, the producer is the one who is putting the event on the wire, but the source may be something else. Yeah, I, it, I probably should not use the word producer here. I, I honestly, I don't care mm -hmm. about the exact wording. I just did not want to have two words that look so similar. I probably should have said unique identifier for the entity making the event, or I don't know, something like that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's exactly where I struggled as well with the producer and the provider and the source. And uh, yeah, I think that's exactly where, where I uh, added that issue a couple of weeks ago, but I, I didn't have time to, to work on it. Right. Yeah. And to be but honest, I could throw out a, a crazy suggestion. I yeah. think the, I think the problem, this problem arises because of the way source is defined in the cloud event spec. And I personally think it's defined incorrectly. Mike, you're going down someplace you don't want to go. <laughs> I know. I wasn't around for when those discussions were had, but uh, it, I think the way that source is used is weird. Okay, bring it. <laughs> bring it. <laughs> Explain yourself, Mike. I, I, I mean, I think when I, when I think of source, I think of the system. Like, oh, this is coming from Google Cloud Storage, or this is coming from uh, MongoDB. Um, and instead, we've made that to be something more like what subject should be. Like, so you have this weird combination of source and subject to actually find out um, a little bit of the thing that, that uh, you have. And the origin system is mostly described by the event type, but event types are not required to be unique by origin system. 
it, it, it's, it, there are scenarios where that's not so easy. For instance, if you have a um, industrial um, uh, machine, that industrial machine may have something that's happening kind of deep in the bowels of that box um, that you want to go and report out. But the, 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 the part that actually does the reporting, that is the producer, that's the one who's formulating the cloud event, is something completely different. So that's, that's far away. So that producer may actually be responsible for 500 different things that exist in, the, in, in, in that machine. And they're not all the same thing. It might be reporting on behalf of a sensor. It might be reporting on behalf of a drive. It might be reporting on, on behalf of a whole universe of things. So there is a producer, and that's the one who's formulating the cloud event. And then there's a source, and that is effectively what that event is about. And those things are clearly distinct. Right, but the producer doesn't appear anywhere in the payload. That's correct. Right. And that makes it a thing that, that can be hard to talk about. Well, so I, I totally get I totally get why the use of source in its current form, the name has always bothered me. But mm. yeah, but it's not so. So yeah, I understand that. But we have we have things that that are affecting producers, and that is, for instance, um, authenticating towards um, a party where that event gets being sent is being sent. That's something that the producer has to do, and not the source. Um, and then there's other aspects like how do you, and this is something that this, that this year describes um, where another role is, is um, uh, touched and that is the subscription manager, which actually is the point where we are um, distributing those events from. So that thing is neither the producer nor the source. So because Thomas? that might be the middleware, which is, which is helping the producer um, distribute its events. Uh, it's an interesting discussion because uh, we also interpreted source as uh, really the machine which actually sends out the event <clears throat> and not the, the sensor which uh, uh, triggers the occurrence. So That's, we interpreted, I think, exactly the other way around. Yeah, and, and so, so we, meant, we meant source to mean literally it is the, the unique identifier of the thing or the context where Oops. the event comes from. So that might yeah. actually, so source may, might be a very rich description of uh, a detailed description of, you know, a, a sensor that sits inside of, a, a, of an industrial machine, while the producer is the thing you configure to go and send those things out. To map this concretely into something that is um, uh, in the industrial realm, realm uh, in OPC UA, where we're introducing, OPC UA is an industrial standard, um, we're introducing cloud events there. I wrote the, the, the binding spec in, for OPC UA for cloud events. Um, that's currently floating around as a proposal over there. And there, the producer is really the OPC uh, UA publisher, which is collecting events from within the OPC uh, UA uh, address space, where those are getting, getting raised. So the, the, the source URI is constructed based on the identifier that is, exists in that OPC UA address space, while the producer itself is identifying itself with its identity, identity towards the, the, all the network actors. So that's why those things are really need to be different. So <clears throat> I don't want to rattle too much on this. I think, I, I think everybody's agreed source class is not the right phrase for it, and I'm okay with that. I don't, um, yep. I will, I will, and I'll remove the word producer. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm okay with, I, I think someone said source system. I kind of like source system just because the word system in there implies to me, it's like the, the, the bigger entity, but to be honest, this, a lot of these field names may actually change as we go through the cycle. Right. And so right now my bigger concern is whether the overall direction of this PR is heading in the right direction or there's something fundamentally wrong with it. Because at this point in time in our life cycle, we have to get to the, we have to sort of assume that each step is just better than what we have right now. And it may not be perfect, but it's a step in the right direction is what the biggest criteria is. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll strive for perfection as we get closer to 1.0. So, I so Mike in particular, I did want to pick on you, aside from the naming aspect, does the direction I've taken here seem sort of okay with you so far, Mike? 
Uh, I'm in it. Hi, Lovely. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to read through the PR at the same time. Okay, and don't, 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 don't worry. As I said, this is too soon for us to approve today, okay. but I did want to bring it up to people's attention, and I'll obviously make these changes to it. Provide feedback in the PR itself as we go forward. Just don't get too hung up, hung up on naming. If you have a good suggestion, I'm all ears, but don't get hung up on thinking that once this PR is accepted, or if it's accepted, that everything's set in stone. As Jem mentioned, we changed lots of stuff right before 1.0 relative to the Jason schema, so we have no qualms about that. We're just trying to make forward progress. Okay. And I did take a, take a quick stab at trying to show what some sample queries might look like. Um, not set in stone, just my quick rough idea because I wanted to show how I didn't think the query format would necessarily have to be very complicated. The questions I had for the group, and I don't necessarily have to have an answer now, but the questions I had were things like, when you specify two different attribute names, is it an or or an and? I was so assuming they're why, different. Yeah, go ahead. Why queries instead of the rest paths like we had before? I have no idea. <laughs> I forgot about that. I, I just, this is just the one that jumped to my head as I was typing up the PR. I'll, yeah, so like I'll, I'll you, go back and take a look. Wanted, if you, yeah, and that first, well, oh, you just scrolled. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hold so on. Right, right around like 162. Yeah. So before okay. you would have been able to say like, you know, host name slash source class slash example.com. So just by, by get, by get rest path, give me all of the uh, entire, the data model for that provider. Oh. So in that model, I understand how you could do that for something like source class. When you get down to something like protocols and types where there's more than one, how did you see that playing out? If I want to say, I want uh, the, the, source, the, the source system that has two, two event types and I want it to be an and or an or. You know, how do you do that kind of stuff with the path thing? I mean, you can have queries on top of, on top of paths for sure. Um, but the you know the the whole the whole the whole point of rest right is that you have canonical paths for access access to objects. Yeah, I, and I think that 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 I guess I'd like to see how it looks because if you're searching on source class, that makes sense to me because that is mm -hmm. the hopefully the, yep. the next object in the in the path. But if you wanted to instead search on description, which you said you did want to be able to support, yep, how would you see that happening? Well, so the other, so the, the, the two common cases are searching on, on source class and searching on type, right? So in the, in the original PR, there were rest paths for both source class and type. So mm -hmm. you could go in and say, give me, you know, give me um, uh, get at slash type slash com dot example dot storage dot upload, right? Mm -hmm. And it would give you all of the source classes that match that. Um, But there's no like there's no reason that you, you can't have a rest path with a a, a query filter after it, um, or or for that matter, you know, get source clash question mark query string right, um, which is also I think in the original as well uh, is for for a listing. Okay. I'll take a I'll take another look at that. Yeah. I think I, I, like I said I just completely forgot about that as I was writing this up. Yeah. No worries. Apologize. Okay. Any other questions on the direction I was heading here? Obviously, it's too new for deep comments, but anything that's jumping out at people, I'm willing to answer questions now. Okay. In that case, please take a look at it. I'm open to any suggestions. Um, let's just not rattle too much on naming. <laughs> that's my only request. Um, let's see. In terms of other PRs, uh, Francesco, did you want to talk about this one or not? I didn't have any progress at all. I okay. didn't have time for this. Okay, that's fine. In that case, before we jump into the TypeScript discussion, are there any other topics related to any of the specs we have? Oh, Clemens, did you want to talk about the schema stuff or do you want to wait until your proposal you sent that you're going to send out before Wednesday next week? Uh, I'll just mention it because uh, um, not everybody may have seen the email. So um, I'm so thank you very much for uh, um, approving forming the working group. We'll see how big that is. Um, I will um, turn that issue, the text in the issue, into a um, spec, and um, 
uh, also provide a, um, a Swagger document along with it that describes um, what the shape of that is. I wanted to do that for this week, but um, there's a lot going on, and so um, I couldn't. I'm also asking for some help from our engineering team. Um, and uh, we'll hopefully have that then for review next, next week. Um, Germany has a holiday on Thursday, at least where I live, so I'm not going to be on the call next week, but I'll have that for uh, review. Um, for the schema registry, um, if, since schema registries are not necessarily novel, um, if any of you have an existing implementation of a schema registry, um, it would be a, a good idea to raise your hand and potentially also point to any existing documentation you may have. A condition for that is obviously that their schema registry is one that you own um, and uh, that is not, unencumbered, not encumbered by licenses that are not open um, so that we can take that in um, because ultimately that's going to be owned by the CNCF. And um, so that would be the only, only condition for that, I guess. Um, but um, uh, whatever we're going to propose here from, from the Microsoft side is not necessarily the last word, I think. Um, and we're totally open to um, you know, what, whatever solution comes out of this. Um, so, and then we're, I'm obviously also interested in uh, folks who are um, interested in driving that forward with us um in this group and i think we need to go and decide um whether we're going to discuss that on in this group here in that forum or whether we're going to make a sub working group um as we did that for the discovery and subscription uh, documents to at least to boot it so if if um um it would be great if you could uh, think about whether um you are interested in participating in that effort um and um I said, I'll, I'll have a proposal out uh, mid next week um, that formalizes effectively what the issue is. But the sh if you look at the issue, um, then um, the shape of um, this will not deviate from, from uh, what we proposed there. Okay. Any questions for Clemens? All right, thank you, Clemens. Looking forward to that. All right, with that, um, I have a very strong suspicion that we will probably not come to any, any kind of formal vote on whether we should keep the SDK repo, I'm sorry, the, the TypeScript SDK repo around or not. I have a feeling this is going to be a long discussion. So if you are not interested in the SDK side of the group, feel free to leave. We're not going to take any formal votes. If we end up and a miracle happens, we come to a decision, we'll just defer the vote until next week so you won't miss it. So feel free to drop off. However, if your name does not have an asterisk next to it in the attendee list, just put a comment in the Zoom chat so I know you're here and I'll put a star there, okay? Actually, hold on, let me just do what I normally do, hold on. Um, Kent, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, Dustin, are you there? Howdy, I'm here. Hello, Remy? Yep, hi. All right, All right. Nick, All right. are you there? Hey, Doug. Nick, okay, I got Mark here. Sam, are you there? Sam? Okay, what about Sergey? Yep, I'm here. Okay, and Grant? I'm here. Okay, did I miss anybody? I sorry for being late. I'm sorry, who's that? Matthias Teppe. Matthias, okay, got it. And Klaus. Okay. Oh, hey, Klaus. How did I miss you? I even talked about you. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Okay, uh, Remy, you might be new to the group. Do me a favor, paste your company name in the Zoom chat if you want to be associated with a company. And with that, TypeScript, who would like to lead off the discussion here? Now, quick question before we jump into that, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, is, is the TypeScript uh, for the next hour is the only thing we're going to be discussing, or there is a because the, the the document has no agenda. That's why I was. Um, yeah, I, I, was just, I apologize. I was going to check that. If there's nothing on the agenda, then this will probably be the only topic. Unless someone in the next hour can come up with one. But a lot of times we do play it by ear. I mean, I have uh, an agenda that I wanted to discuss, but uh, so that's why I was waiting for uh, April, I mean, May 14 thing to be created. But it oh, was... sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Tell you what, while we're talking about the TypeScript thing, I will go and add the section header and then you can add it to there. Fair enough. Okay. And Thomas, your hands up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, 
actually my, my Zoom client crashed, but I wanted to quickly uh, ask uh, an SDK question. Would that be possible before sure. you go into the TypeScript? Sure. Uh, I tried out the C Sharp SDK and uh, I quickly need to switch my screen. Since my, my client crashed, it's difficult to get out. Oh, here we go. And uh, my question is, I used content mode binary, and then I also tried content mode structured. And in both cases, uh, all the HTTP header fields were filled in. Yep. And I wasn't sure whether this is intentionally or this is uh, rather an issue. So oh, that's that I wrote that. Um, uh, that is intentional. So we, we kept it we kept it um, optional in the um, uh, in the specification, um, which means okay. that even you even though you send structured if you're sending structured mode data. Um, it's permitted to also uh, send the attributes um, in the transport headers. And I thought, uh, I thought it's the other way around, isn't it? Because in the structured mode, you use content type cloud events plus JSON. Yes. Whereas in the binary, you only use application slash JSON. Or whatever. If, you, if you're sending, if you're sending JSON, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. So, so, but the headers, so which headers are you confused about? Yeah, I was just confused because I, I, I watched a video from uh, Doc actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, where he explained HTTP binary, which uh, showed the header fields and yep. then on the structured slide, there were no header fields. So, so the spec what the specification says is that um, if you're sending structured mode, and you're sending it over HTTP, yeah. then it's still permitted for, okay. the, um, for the headers to appear as if you were sending structured mode. Okay. okay. And so I'm, I'm choosing to do that in the, in, um, uh, in, in the C-sharp SDK. Okay. Uh, because um, there may be an intermediary like a proxy mm -hmm. who's actually interested in, in, in some of that information to do whatever it likes. And so, independent of what you choose as the encoding for the end-to-end -end relationship, um, that you're still enabling the proxy to go and take a look at those headers. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm doing this. Arguably, um, I, could, I could go and add a switch there. Uh, no, it's fine, it's fine. Just uh, wanted to know whether this right. was intentionally. Okay. So, that, yeah, uh, so that is, that's no accident. That was, mm -hmm. that was fully intentional. So any intermediary uh, should actually check for the header fields, no matter what the content type is, right? Uh, no, it doesn't have to, but because yeah. the, the, okay. the content type per se, the co content type per se is a clear indicator of what you're looking at. Okay. But nevertheless, they can look for the HTTP header fields. Correct. Yes. So they could, it's they could, option. for instance, look at CE-subject -C yeah. or CE-source and make some decision based on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you okay. very much. Cool. That answered the question. So to the main topic on the agenda, TypeScript SDK. Um, Lance, Grant, when do you guys want to kick off to bring everybody up to speed on what's going on and what the question is? Yeah, sure. Uh, can everyone hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, uh, so uh, there is an outstanding issue in the uh, Cloud Events SDK for uh, JavaScript, um, and that uh, issue is around uh, TypeScript support. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript used by many companies um, that allows you to have uh, static types. Um, during uh, developing time to ensure that your code is uh, is more uh, type proof and, and safe and it provides a uh, great developer tooling. Um, right now there's no support for TypeScript um, in the JavaScript uh, SDK. There have has uh, been a lot of discussion in, a, in the 
uh, GitHub issue around it, and there have been proposals around um, annotating types, but there's been some, I, I, I want to say, resistance on uh, adding TypeScript. The, the actual change would be changing the file extension of the files from .js to .ts, um, and then uh, adding a watcher compilation step. Um, given that uh, there's a lot of interest in TypeScript, and uh, personally it affects my work um, and a lot of other work, and there's not been any progress, uh, one of the recent decisions, temporary decisions, was to create a separate repo called uh, SDK TypeScript that would, in fact, uh, fully adopt TypeScript and um, it would still be a module that's published to NPM, but it would allow for uh, some of the features that, uh, well, it would just support TypeScript. That, that's currently the state. Um, I created a pull request recently um, to initialize the TypeScript repo, and that's what you see there. And yeah, I think one of the biggest advantages is that you'll get uh, the scrape ID autocompletion, and um, you'll get like linting errors, and you'll get a lot of uh, things that you don't, that you really can't get without um, providing types. I think they'll, this will be really useful for developers, personally, that I work with uh, that are uh, consuming cloud events. Okay, thank you. So just, uh, I'll, I'll pick on Lance in a sec, but just from my point of view, and I've made it perfectly clear in every comment I make, I don't next to nothing about this stuff. And I want to, however, I do think it's important that we don't necessarily get into a discussion about whether TypeScript versus JavaScript is one better than the other, anything like that. To me, the overall question is, can we do both in one repo or not? Because uh, I, from my outsider's point of view, I feel like I'm hearing slightly different versions of what's possible. Right? On one hand, I hear somebody say, yes, it's possible to do it. We just need to have compromise. Other times I hear, nope, it would be better for the end users if they were separate. I don't know what the answer is, but I think that is the ultimate question we're trying to get here is, does it make sense to do it in one repo versus two, not whether one is better than the other? So now let me pick on Lance, since I know you have a, you have an opinion on this entire discussion. Yeah, of course I have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I personally would not, um, I, I don't think it's a good idea to, to have a separate repo. I mean, I think if that's the, where we land, that's where we land, but I agree it splits the community. Um, you know, this conversation has been going on for about two and a half, three weeks now. Um, and uh, I, I feel like I've compromised a lot um, and put together a PR, uh, yesterday that introduces TypeScript in a way where it generates type definitions um, and does the sort of type checking that Grant you were just talking about um, like your little screenshot there in the in the yeah that one um, that you know works with generated type definitions and stuff like that and personally I feel like this is a a, a nice compromise on a path towards potentially switching over completely to TypeScript. The way I look at TypeScript is there's sort of benefits on in two different communities. You've got your people who are maintaining the repository and you have your end users. And most of this discussion has revolved around what is the benefit for the end users. And as far as I can see, doing um, type definitions and uh, and you know, good quality Java docs, which can all be enforced through linting, um, is a nice compromise on a potential path towards, uh, m what am I trying to say? No, the end users, yeah. So for end users, I think it gets us there, or at least it gets us like 95% there. I don't know what that other 5% would be. I haven't been able to see it, uh, but it seems to me like it gets us there. For the developer side of the, or the maintainer side of the community, um, you know, there's a much, much larger pool of JavaScript developers who would potentially be able to contribute to this repository if it were, if it maintained a pure JS implementation with type definitions and good quality JS docs. Um, and the question has been, well, okay, if you go that far, why don't we just change the files to .ts and have the transpilation step every time? 
I guess my question is, um, if we're if we're just sticking with pure JavaScript, then why have that intermediate intermediate transpilation step? Um, because we're going from a .ts file with pure JavaScript to a .js file with pure JavaScript, and it doesn't seem to provide any benefit that I'm I, I'm aware of. Um, maybe it does. I just don't know. You know, I'm not a TypeScript developer, and that's part of the reason why I would like to find a compromise that doesn't require us to completely change the repository to TypeScript, uh, but solves the problem for end users. Okay, Remy, your hands up. Yeah, uh, I think like the sum up from Lance was pretty good. Uh, I think for the end user, uh, the PR he did last uh, yesterday uh, basically kind of solved it uh, from the visibility from the end user. I really think for an end user point of view, it's really bad if we end up having a split uh, repo because that means you'll have two packages on NPM and it's going to be really hard to track what is the official, even if it's two official packages. It's kind of really weird to see that, I think, in the world. Um, and then on the comments, the, like, I would like, in fact, to join and maybe um, contribute a bit, but it's kind of, I, I don't understand how we try to split the community between JavaScript and TypeScript programmer. Uh, maybe it's me who oversimplifies stuff, but for me, if you know how to develop in JavaScript, like, you know how to develop in TypeScript. It's not like a crazy change. So I would think it's a good benefit for the community of um, maintainers to switch to TypeScript. But of course, like I just joined this discussion. I'm new here, so I don't want to, like, I'm no one to, <laughs> to voice, I would say. But uh, yeah, I think you, Lance did a great job of looking at TypeScript. And I think the next step is basically to just migrate. So I. My advice would be like just go for it, but uh, that's still up to you. As an end user, I think what he proposed would be enough. Okay, thank you. Lance, your hands up. Yeah, um, I guess the only thing I wanted to address is the the, the thing about um, about TypeScript being a superset of JavaScript, and if you're a JavaScript developer, you should be able to write TypeScript. That's true, unless you don't actually know what those superset bits are. Um, you know, you can you can write all the JavaScript in your .ts files. That's totally fine. But like, there's code in in the SDK TypeScript repository that is not. I mean, it, it's part of that superset, uh, and that's what I'm trying to avoid, at least for the short term. So probably a stupid question, but it, is it not possible to have in essence two different sort of build or de deployment paths within the same repository? Meaning if you're writing TypeScript, this is the path you use to, to, to you know, compile your code and then run it. But if you're doing JavaScript, here's the path you use and it's more of just a bundling step. I mean, is, is that does that make any sense? Is that not is that is that more confusing to people? Because I I still can't wrap my head around whether there actually would be common code that would be used at runtime, and it's more of just a a development build time difference. Does that make any yeah. sense? I mean, it's all the same. It's all just running JavaScript and Node at the end of the day. Um, it doesn't really make sense to have the same implementation of uh, a spec um, in two different folders in the same repo. I mean, ideally, um, there'd just be TypeScript and it would just compile to normal JavaScript and, and there'd just be one folder. Okay, I'll answer your hands up. Oh, sorry, that, that's old. Oh, it's old? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I do agree with Grant. Yeah, I mean, I, I can, I don't, it's, it's literally like a block, like I don't know what to do. It's, it's a blocker for tons of projects, including Google Project 
and like I like that I, there's been discussion about like personal compromises and like adding tooling um, but I, I don't really see that working I, I don't understand like this is not done it's very common to just write convert your uh, module to TypeScript um, yeah I'm really sorry about splitting the community and I don't want to do that and that's why I've held like that's why there's been so much discussion and I'd rather not just publish uh, a separate NPM module but I mean it's literally a blocker and and there's no like proposed solution um, for interoperating with other TypeScript modules so I don't really know what to do at this point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Francesco, your hands up first. Yeah. So uh, I'll say that I have uh, a little knowledge about uh, JavaScript versus TypeScript, but to me, this looks like saying that you recreate uh, a Java library from scratch because you want to have uh, Kotlin bindings. I mean, can you just create a little shame between uh, TypeScript and all the JavaScript implementation? Because I mean, cr then creating, I mean, it's, it's quite a lot of work to create a, a new SDK from scratch. If I understood correctly. I mean. Well, the issue, sorry. Uh, well, the issue with, um, yeah, it is a lot of work and that's why it's been held off for such a long time. Um, like, ideally, we don't have to maintain two code paths. One is the type system and one like which is either like uh, JS doc um, or some external like interface type uh, file which nobody wants to write. Um, or you just write uh, TypeScript. And so, and, which is literally just the minimal way to write TypeScript is just to change your file from .js to .ts. And the tool TSC can auto-generate uh, type bindings such that you get some nice auto-completion in your IDE. And so that, that was the first proposed um, change of, well, if, if we really don't like to write interfaces, which I understand, I, I, being able to understand um, TypeScript isn't as intuitive uh, if you write some of the extra features. But if we simply just just change the files from .js to .ts and introduce this uh, watch or build command, then that's then you're writing TypeScript, and and you don't have to use any of these extra features and your the yeah, IDE will still work and it, it won't really be any different than your normal developer cycle. Okay, hey, Eric, your hands up. Yeah, I, I um, wanted to uh, make a few comments. Um, I've, I've been a bit vocal on there and I've been trying to uh, um, you know, cut through. Uh, I've, I've got a few years behind me in JavaScript, I've just started picking up TypeScript, uh, but I come from uh, type languages primarily. Um, so the, the kind of two options that seem to be floated around are that strictly JavaScript with a lot of type uh, annotations in the form of JS docs and other tooling around it could spit out uh, the TypeScript types. And uh, TSLint can, doesn't, you know, clearly doesn't have to care what the file extension is and can look at JavaScript as though it were TypeScript and uh, analyze it. Um, there's, uh, as far as I've seen, there's a little more volume in the code uh, in order to provide some of that. Um, and, it, it, it would be um, a lot of duct tape in sense. Uh, 
Um, the alternative uh, that could potentially satisfy but still be a compromise would be converting to TypeScript and uh, then enforcing using the TypeScript linter that none of the, uh, uh, or at least a, a large set of the TypeScript uh, constructs would not be used. And in that way, uh, maintain the kind of JavaScript look and feel of the repository. I think um, something that, that uh, uh, Lance brought up that is an important point is that the uh, JavaScript community is very large and tends to have a, a huge diversity. It's one of the on-ramps into programming for a lot of people. And if somebody came to the repo and was hoping to contribute but saw something that was really unfamiliar, that might put them off. And, and maybe that's okay. I, I, you know. Um, that might not be the, the greatest, strongest expert in the world, and, uh, but um, that, that is one of those things that uh, would be an impact of, of you know, switching whole hog to TypeScript, using all the type annotations and all the, the strengths and capabilities that that language offers. Um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to share that kind of perspective. Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, Sergey, your, your hand's next. Um, just wanted to um, maybe uh, ask a question that was already asked, but I uh, wanted to get back to it. Um, since TypeScript here is uh, actually two topics. One is TypeScript definitions, and another one is writing the SDK in TypeScript. Uh, which one are we aiming at? Uh, because I believe uh, the real issue is that the SDK is hard to consume from uh, JavaScript, oh sorry, from TypeScript projects because there are no type information, there's no type information at all. But I don't think that rewriting the SDK in TypeScript is the only solution out there. As someone already mentioned, there is an option to just ship uh, the type definitions next to JavaScript sources. And that's what uh, React team was doing, if I remember correctly, before they migrated to TypeScript. But anyways, uh, and few other popular, popular libraries are doing. So uh, I don't remember that we agreed that it's not an option. So maybe we can reiterate on it. Before I get to Lance, does anybody want to comment on that specifically? I think when you say it was before they migrate to TypeScript is something good to know. It's like basically their end goal was still to migrate to, to TypeScript and the, the base, like the code base was probably too big to do it in one shot. While basically we have a couple of peers that show that you could do it in one shot on your repo because at the end this repo is not like huge. It's quite a small repo. There's not that many contributors, so I think it's more easy to. It was. It wasn't the case for them. Um, they were using a uh, flow uh, for quite some time, and they did ship uh, TypeScript definitions just so that uh, TypeScript users are not complaining about React being hard to consume from TypeScript. But they were fine with JavaScript for many years before they decided to migrate to TypeScript and there is long story. So I don't think it's a good example of uh, migration. It's rather uh, just a history of, an, uh, of a project. And there are many other projects that still ship TypeScript definitions without having to rewrite everything into um, TypeScript. And we're having the same station in Java world where some new fancy languages uh, start appearing like Kotlin, uh, Druvi, Scala and others. But uh, I would like to ask people involved into this conversation. Why not CoffeeScript? Let's say I'm a fan of Coffee, CoffeeScript and I want to have CoffeeScript uh, you know, support in the SDK. So why shouldn't we rewrite it in CoffeeScript? So, uh, so, so wait, 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 Jump put your hand up if you want to answer that, that particular question, but Lance, you're, I think you're next. Okay, thanks. Um, I just have a couple of questions and then want to address a couple of points. Um, so Grant, you said that Google won't use the existing SDK. Is that, they won't use it if it's not written in TypeScript or they won't use it if there are no type definitions? 
that's one question. And the other question is, you said something about it, you, it can't, you can't integrate with other TypeScript modules. And I don't quite understand what that means. <clears throat> like, does that mean if as a dependency for something in SDK JavaScript, we, we want to pull in some other thing that's written in TypeScript? I don't know what that would be, but we want to pull in some other thing. There's like, like it seems to me that we could do that, right? Because it, like once you pull it, once you do npm install, what you're getting is the transpiled JavaScript from that dependency. You're not getting the TypeScript. <clears throat> then the other two points I want to make, um, the JS doc part, I think we need to do anyway. I don't think that that is a burden specific to TypeScript. We need to have our code well documented and publish it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I kind of don't think that's necessarily a, a burden specific to TypeScript. That should just be something that we do. Um, and then I think I already said this, but if we're just sticking to pure JavaScript for the implementation, what is the point of going through the transpilation step and changing everything to .ts file? What's the point of going through that transpilation if we're transpiling from JavaScript to JavaScript? I, I don't, I, honestly, I don't understand why, why we would do that. So those are, that's, that's where I am. Okay, so Grant, I think there were some questions in there for you. Did you wanna to try to answer those? Uh, yes, I think I captured five questions <laughs> um, <laughs> of the two questions that were stated. Okay, uh, so, um, so yeah, one, one of the questions is uh, integrating with uh, other TypeScript modules and like um, another comment about like when you npm install, you're getting uh, JavaScript dot TypeScript, well, um, for dependencies that are using this SDK, uh, you you are getting um, just uh, JavaScript, but uh, if you develop, so NPM has this feature, like directly within Node, within NPM, of specifying uh, your type definitions along with your package. Usually these are auto-generated. Um, if there's some other way that's, uh, that we can do that without using TypeScript, that is okay, although it'll but, be- But that's what, that's what my PR does, right? It, it generates the type definitions. Yeah, but um, then you commit the whole definition, like the thing that Grant was saying is correct. Like basically you see in the modification, like all the files going through, while basically we don't really care. When you do a PR review, I don't see how you want to do it because you're going to have to re like skip basically all those files because you don't really care. And that's kind of weird in the workflow, in my opinion. Well, it's pretty straightforward to, to generate those at publish time when you're publishing the module and, and include them in the publishing. And I'm sorry to interrupt, I just have to say one more thing. The fact that I don't understand everything that we're talking about is I think a good enough reason to say, let's don't switch fully to TypeScript today. I, I mean, I've, I've contributed 20 substantive pull requests in the last two or three weeks. Like, I, I don't wanna like spend all this time trying to figure out how to deal with TypeScript. And that's why I'm proposing a, a graduated approach to this. Like I, I'm a developer with more than 20 years of experience and you know, like, I, like it, to me, I, it's sometimes a little confusing. And so can, can we not just acknowledge that maybe not everybody has that level of TypeScript experience and that converting a repository over to TypeScript might just be a little bit alienating? Okay, I'm gonna stop. So, so quick, quick question. Cause I'm not sure, I, maybe I got lost Grant, but I think that one of the questions in there was, does the, does the SDK itself need to be converted to TypeScript or just support TypeScript at sort of like an API level using my dumb terminology? What was the answer to that question? The answer to that question is, yes, if there is some magical way that is like, that can produce these type definitions that is easy for consumers and developers, then yeah, sure. 
but literally like the authors of TypeScript do not recommend any such solution and they recommend just writing TypeScript and and <clears throat> there will like there'll be plenty of bugs and dependencies that are not supported by any major contributors if if we do go this other route of using JS doc to generate TypeScript because it's not used by 99.5% of, of normal. Well, Grant, Grant, in my PR, it's, I'm using the TypeScript compiler to generate those, those type definitions. That's why I don't understand why you're saying it's, it's magical. It's, it's happening right there in the PR. Yeah. So, if I may, if I may. So the, yeah, the, the, point of using the whole point of using, like, I, I'm so surprised that we're, we're now, we're okay with using the TypeScript compiler for a feature that's really meant to just support legacy uh, modules of, of using TSC to generate types. Like, the only reason, like, this was like an issue like three, four years ago when the world was only just JavaScript and, and people were migrating to TypeScript. Um, it's so much easier to just change your extension and not and get all the other benefits that you don't see with with just using tsc with javascript okay clemens actually hold on clemens before you start grant did you answer all the questions that you thought you, that was asked of you or did you have a little more to say um but there are some questions like why are we transpiling if we're just using javascript um and there's a comment about I've contributed 20 pull requests and 20 years of experience, and it's sometimes confusing. Um, I don't know. I could address those, but no. Well, let's stick to the original ones that you were asked. Um, okay. I think I think you probably addressed those. I think if not, I'm sure someone will raise their hand. So, Clemens, yeah, I think yeah, your so, hand was up. Thanks. So, so Remy Remy actually makes the point. Just made the point in the chat that I've been waiting to make. Um, and that is the, the struggle you, you guys are having seems to be the, so I have no opinion on the concrete matter, I have to say, and I'm neutral to it. So, so I'm, I'll just give you the observation. And that is um, that this is the same struggle that um, C++ and C have, um, where um, C existed and then C++ came around and then people were doing, starting to do C++ things uh, starting with you know different kinds of of calling conventions, and then you know even even without doing classes, people were writing C programs using C plus plus constructs, and all of a sudden stuff stuff ended up being incompatible. Um, and and where that ended up was that people were then starting to build libraries that were hard C plus plus, and uh, the the C ninety nine camp still exists. And they're doing uh, hard C, C libraries and C++ and C, they do, they do cross each other because you can, um, you can use C instead of C++, but that's pretty much it. So I do wonder, and that's, and that's, that, that's been a struggle that's been going on for a while. And I've, I feel like that's something that we're, we're living here. This TypeScript uh, being, if you will, the, the, super, the super language, that's the C++-like one and uh, Java being the foundation beans like C, where that sort of incompat incompatibility exists. So I do wonder whether it's really just two SDKs, which might be sharing some code where there might be um, you know, a core in, C in JavaScript that the TypeScript implementation might use, but the might TypeScript in implementation might also just go and deviate because that's, that's, what that's what's happening in C++ and C land. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Clemens. Uh, Just uh, as I said, I'm not taking any. I'm not taking any any uh, positions otherwise. But um, it's that struggle will continue, and you will keep pulling on on either side. And if there's a you know, JavaScript and TypeScript, you know, two um, uh, you know factions with different interests, then forking um, into two different uh, um, language implementations, ex accepting TypeScript as its own language might just make sense. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tim?
Tim, are you there? Oh, you okay. Sorry, I forget. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not really involved in. I'm just a user of the both Java and the JavaScript SDK. So, from my point of view, for what it's worth, uh, I work on VS Code, Visual Studio Code extensions where TypeScript is enforced, and I use the library and I created my own uh, data bindings, like you would with the PR does. Um, at the end of the day, I just want to say because then I have to maintain both the JavaScript libraries and the type bindings and they have to be in sync. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make is I, I decided to just use straight JavaScript to create the cloud events because to me, uh, it makes no sense having the data binding separate as a separate library or a separate dependency requirement. Um, that's that's all I wanted to say that from the user perspective sometimes things are a little bit different where I have hundreds of dependencies I just don't want to deal with this you know when with cloud events updates version I don't want to have to deal with the data bindings as well so to me it would make sense if it was TypeScript and then compile down to pure JavaScript which I, if I wanted to use it in the browser I can do as well but again, I'm just, this is just my opinion from this perspective of where, what I'm doing. But of course, other people might have a different perspective. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Eric, you're up next. Uh, to address the last uh, point, uh, something that has been broadly agreed upon, as far as I can tell, is that TypeScript types should be created and published so that this uh, need for the consumers of the library to do any work is completely gone. Um, I, I raised my hand to address the point that uh, Clemens was making, and uh, one of the one of the problems is uh, if you're using C and C++, then you do need uh, distinct libraries because of the calling conventions and such. Um, what uh, with with uh, TypeScript, it's compiled down to JavaScript, and so uh, what what would likely happen is that uh, communities that, that if, if there were types published in both, the communities of TypeScript and JavaScript developers would consume both. If only types were only produced by one, uh, then all the TypeScript would go, but the JavaScript would probably also uh, split itself across. And um, one of the things that would then result is uh, users would have questions and it, they would show up on Stack Overflow. And now we would have a bunch of questions asked about potentially incompatible uh, implementations. And uh, this, is, this is something that would be very public and very confusing and require a whole lot of uh, uh, kind of knowledge uh, around uh, these decisions that are being made that really are impacting maintainers uh, only and uh, contributors as they come by. Um, so I, I think that's really an outcome that we would need to avoid um, for, for that, uh, as well as the reasons of uh, the duplication of effort and other things like that. Um, uh, there, there does seem to be a pretty good uh, the, uh, set of compromise options at this point. And, and I, I have a pretty good amount of confidence that we can, the group can work through that. Okay, thank you, Eric. Lance, you're up next. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, I guess, I guess my question is, who who is meant to benefit from a conversion to TypeScript? Is it the end user who's consuming the SDK, or is it the maintainer? Um, for me personally, I feel like a conversion to TypeScript would today not benefit me in a positive way. This is why I'm proposing a transition that may not necessarily be 100% on the first step. Um, if it's Lance, Lance user, when you said me, did you, were you speaking as an SDK developer or as a yes, user? Yeah, sorry, as an SDK developer. Okay, thank you. Um, like, it, I, you know, I don't really wanna write my code in TypeScript, and that's just a personal preference. But it seems like the, the, the important thing here is making the module um, high quality and consumable in a way that TypeScript developers are comfortable with it. And it does what they expect it to do from a tooling perspective, right? What the, what the IDE is supposed to do and stuff like that. 
Um, I'd like to think that um, the proposal that I put forth yesterday actually achieves that. And if it doesn't, can someone tell me how it does it? Okay, before I put Grant on the spot, <laughs> Oleg, are your hands up next? Yeah, I'll try to be very quick. Uh, I know we have a very limited knowledge of JavaScript, absolutely no knowledge of TypeScript. But I think based on just observing it from last week and now this week, uh, the reason why we having this we, we even have this discussion is because there's some kind of an implied relationship between TypeScript and JavaScript. Like we don't argue about JavaScript versus Java or C Sharp or Go or whatever. So maybe that's where the real issue is. I mean, we're talking about split of the community, but we're not talking about split of the community between Java and C Sharp, right? So maybe we should just look at it as TypeScript and JavaScript, right? And and be done with it because uh, like don't it's not splitting of a community. It, there's just two communities and you're free to go with whichever way you want to. That's, I'm done. Okay. Uh, Remy, I know your hand is up there, but I wanted to force Grant, if, I, if it's okay, Grant, to uh, yeah, sure. answer this question. Um, so, sorry, which question is it? The huge benefits? It, it, no, no, it was, I think it was Lance. I think Lance was asking why is PR can't be a step in the right direction, I think. Lance, you want to rephrase it? Uh, I mean, that that's it. Like, okay. uh, in fact, in the PR, I say uh, this could be a possible path to a transition to full TypeScript, but just not ready to go there today. Does it achieve what we want it to achieve for the end user, for the end developer experience? Okay. Um, so... Yeah, I believe I, I made some comments on the original PR. And I, was, I was happy to see the PR heading in the right direction. Um, so I, I think I mentioned earlier that it's quite weird using the TypeScript tool TSC, which is the TypeScript compiler to compile JavaScript to generate these type definitions. Um, I, I, I mean, I think it's in the right step. I, again, one of, one of the issues was I already created a PR, which seems like it was ignored, that would directly have merge conflicts with this PR. And so like, why, why are we purposefully creating PRs that have merge conflicts? Um, um, yeah. Grant, Grant, can you elaborate a little on that? <clears throat> I understand the concept of merge conflicts. <laughs> it's just your PR, was it to rewrite the SDK in TypeScript or was it as a, or was your PR more of a compromise position, but it was just a different way of doing compromise position than what Lance is suggesting? Uh, so my PR introduced one one file or renamed one file from index.js to index.ts and set up tooling uh, which is basically the same tooling as in the other P, uh, as in Lance's PR of um, adding TypeScript as a developer dependency. Does that make sense? Um, right. I think you got a little too low level. I'm just trying to figure out whether your PR would have, would still allow a JavaScript developer, whether it's an SDK JavaScript developer or a user from JavaScript developer to, to feel like they're still using a JavaScript SDK. Yes, but I mean, the, the PRs are basically the same, really. I, uh, they both, I mean, you'll, there's like no interface changes. You're, if you're a JavaScript developer, you're still going to be a JavaScript developer. If you're an SDK maintainer, you're still going to write your normal JavaScript. There's no code changes, really. Okay. Remy, your hands up. 
Uh, yeah, no, just to go in the same direction. Like the thing is, for me, there was like, there is only one community. It's like, there is just the JavaScript community. Some people use TypeScript on top of it, some don't. But if you look at like how I would define the community is, is it where are the packages are stored? And it's all on NPM. They are all using the same infrastructure. It's not like uh, it's on Maven or there is a TypeScript different repository. It's using the JavaScript repository. So it's basically JavaScript. It's just a supersede on that. So, and for for the number of contributors, what I do understand is like I, no no judge there. But on GitHub, I see that Grant is contributing uh, also to that repo. So I don't know. Like you, you need to find a way to to match together. I like the new TypeScript uh, repo. Like I like the code uh, posted by a grant on the site, which is in that case a complete rewrite. But the PR he did on the SDK JavaScript is not a rewrite. It's like also a migration. So, but please find a way together. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Let's get along. Okay, Eric, you're up. Yeah. Um, I, I would ask that uh, uh, Lance Grant interrupt me if I'm wrong on the points I'm about to make. Um, but as I understand it, at the, uh, the, the compromise positions have effectively made it so that despite the choice we make, the user experience of a consumer of the library will not be different. Um, yes. I would say at the top level, that uh, Grant's PR is converting to TypeScript, um, and that was its intention. Um, the, uh, and of course, uh, Lance's is uh, an approach to maintaining JavaScript and using the TypeScript tooling to produce the types automatically. Um, Eric? Oh, yeah, sorry, that, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Oh, okay. I, I think that what, uh, maybe maybe uh, to summarize, uh, I think what we've gotten, the point we've gotten to is that there is a maintainer experience in terms of the approach taken to providing those types and uh, then uh, what language uh, constructs are allowable. Um, okay. Fundamentally, it's a good position. We've made good progress, I think. Okay, John, your hands up. And we're probably gonna have to call time on this soon. And I have a proposal, not as a proposal, but a, a statement. <laughs> so John. So, so as, I, as I wrote in my comments in the, in the thread on GitHub, the, the, as Remy was saying, the, the, it's really one community as far as JavaScript as an ecosystem, right? So a split, is is materially different than the C versus C plus plus issue. Okay, um, they are they are merged. Um, in terms of the, um, you know, what I was trying to get to is, I, I think as Eric has been been saying, the Lance's PR using JS doc and TSC to create these type definitions, right? versus um, Grant's original PR, not his new repo PR, right, uh, as a separate thing. There, it, you know, it feels like it's 48% one way and 52% the other way. We, like, they don't seem very far apart, right? And so what I've been trying to hear is, well, what's the material difference, right? If we're gonna put the constraint that the, the actual code in the repo, at least for the, time being is limited to JavaScript and whatever we need to support TypeScript usage with the annotations or the auto-generated whatever, like, like it, it, it feels like we're, 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 we're bike shedding on, on what's effectively no difference for the end user experience, right? And I think, I think moving the ball forward like, you know, again, I'm not in there day to day on the JavaScript either way. So like in that sense, I don't care, but like, what's the, what's that, you know, what's that swing of a couple of percent of the, the 
you know, switching it to .ts files and the regular TS flow. Okay, so you get the transpilation step, but you're you're still, if you go the other way, you have JS doc and you're you're doing the extra tooling to generate and package and all of that for the TypeScript developers, right? So I, I guess the, I'm missing why why there seems to be such a such a visceral um, dispute about what seems like a very small difference. Okay, I'll go to Sergey and then I'm going to ask people to comment directly on that question. Hey, Sergey. Okay. Um, so I don't have um, like another argument or anything, but I just wanted to state one thing. Uh, I checked the project state and I see that the project was not created by Lance. He just joined the development, but he did quite some contributions in the past few uh, days or a few weeks, and he was contributing value. I believe, or I, I, I can be wrong here, but if the project would be in TypeScript and Lance said that he has a very limited experience, uh, TypeScript experience, he may, not, uh, he may not have decided to join the project and we would miss these contributions. And I question how many other contributors we may miss if uh, we rewrite project in a language that is less popular than TypeScript, even though TypeScript is very popular, but still. Okay, thank you. Lance, your hands up. Lance? Sorry, I was talking to my muted microphone. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I guess I just wanted to address the, you know, the question of, of like, why digging your heels in or, you know, why is this such a, you know, a, a big uh, source of friction? Um, you know, I, and Sergey, I think, said a little bit of that, which is, you know, if this had been TypeScript a month ago and I came to look at it, I would have, I would have probably not started to contribute to it. I'm just not comfortable with it. And I feel like in the course of the last two or three weeks, I did start, like, I will never do this. I will never, ever go this way um, and have made a lot of concessions along the way. And all I'm asking for is a single concession to like take this a little bit slowly if we can um, still provide the end user experience that we're looking for, that TypeScript developers are looking for. Okay. Right, that's, that's not the question I'm actually talking about, right? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. In the thread, in the thread, we already got to the point where at least I think, right, not to put words in Grant's mouth, <laughs> right, but my understanding, and I think Eric comments were echoing this is, I think there was agreement that we're not going to just add all these TypeScript features into the code. It was exactly about this difference in the tooling, right, of basically JS doc plus, you know, the TSC hacking and the pipeline to generate things versus letting the TS pipeline do its regular course of business by changing the, the file extensions to TS and putting the lint restrictions to keep it restricted to uh, core J, uh, JavaScript as the, the base language features. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Really, the difference is in tooling. So, okay, anybody want to make a comment? Okay, so <laughs> it, I, I'm not necessarily sure that either side is necessarily moved. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of at the point now where I feel like it's gonna just come down to a vote. Um, and I guess what I'd like to ask though is <clears throat> between now and next Thursday, meaning the regular serverless working group call or Codvin's call, um, if, Lance and Grant would be willing to at least continue the discussions they've been having on trying to find that middle ground in the hopes that maybe a miracle will happen before Thursday. But if it doesn't happen, then come Thursday, we'll just gonna have to take a vote and see what happens. I mean, that sounds fine. I, I'd like to say that we, like, we already started a vote in the big long thread I don't know how many months ago. And then Fabio said, script wins. 
on the it's never enforced. And so I feel like even if we take a vote, like like will we all agree on on one way or another? How is that going to be enforced? Well, to be clear, I, in my opinion, the vote isn't within the SDK. The vote is within the cloud events. Um, okay. And I, I understand what you're saying, though, that, you know, you sort of had a vote already in the SDK. And, and it, as long as that decision was limited to just the SDK, then I would say, yeah, at the, you know, the, the Java SDK guys can do whatever they want to do. It's their, it's their repo. Um, however, now that is, for better or worse, that, that decision or that vote was never executed on. And so we're at a different point in time, unfortunately. And now we're at the point where in order to, to keep the, the TypeScript repo, I think that that question is now bigger than just the JavaScript SDK. It has to be, I think, be answered by the broader group. So that's why I think it is a different vote. Um, okay. But uh, John, is your hand old or new? It, it's new. Okay, go ahead. So, so, so to, to follow on your point, Doug, the, the, the question is, will, will, it sounds like there's, there's two votes, right? One is, more or less around what I'm trying to talk about is can it, like, it seems like to me to simplify it it's a question of do we go with JS doc and TSC hacking uh, and keeping the extensions dot JS versus changing the extensions to dot TS and tweaking the pipeline to enforce the source language staying JavaScript that's one, that's the technical side of the discussion, which is I think where we're at. I think there's a separate discussion, which is what you're bringing up, Doug, is if like we blow up the whole world because everybody's upset <laughs> on the technical argument, then there's a cloud events project level argument of do we support two overlap, you know, heavily overlapping end user communities with having two different repos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Eric, your hands up. I was basically going to make uh, reinforce some of those points. Yeah. It's it's exactly that. We there's a you know docs and public experience uh, decision that I think is very much a cloud events uh, discussion and and decision, and then the uh, tooling decision I think is something that only maintainers should make. Okay, so let me, let me echo back what I think I heard you guys say to make sure I heard it right. It sounds to me like you're saying that within the SDK, it's within the JavaScript SDK itself, you guys need to figure out whether you can resolve it yourself, whether that's a, a vote or something else, you guys need to figure out whether you can resolve it yourself. And if you can't resolve it within the group itself and the yeah, if you can't resolve it within the group yourself, then it has to bubble up to the full blown working group in terms of whether we're going to create a separate repo because because if you if, if you don't resolve it yourself right now I think you're going to go on the path you're on right which is Grant wants a separate repo and he's asking for that and if he doesn't get a resolution in the in the JavaScript SDK that he can live with I assume Grant's request is still going to stick which means the working group itself has to resolve his request which is a formal vote, in my opinion. Does that make any sense, or I've completely messed up my words? I raised my hand again. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I would say that uh, if if uh, the, the problem is that I think uh, there's fairly broad consensus for the group, especially because of the ecosystem, that two repositories is not a good outcome. That's problematic. Um, in a sense, I think the, I, I'm, I don't think I can say this in total good faith, but I, but I think that um, the decision of the cloud events group would be that these two have to figure out how to live together. And, and we would very much hope that it's peaceful and that everyone's needs can be satisfied. Um, exactly how those needs get satisfied, I don't think the group has a lot of opinion about. Most of us aren't maintainers and, and won't be impacted by that. So um, that the vote would be whether the external community is impacted based on whether there are two repos or one. Well, 
I guess I'm trying to figure out the, the, the concrete next steps here, right? Because it seems to me that we, we can't let this decision linger for much longer. It's, on, it's been out there a while. Uh, actually, John, is your hand new or old? It's new. Go for it. <laughs> It's, so I've 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 tried to to uh, channel Doug, uh -oh. <laughs> uh, to to help corral this, right? Like, can e, 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 is it fair to say to for both Grant and Lance as the champions of their respective um, groups that the the argument as of right now is really what I said before. Right, it's JS doc plus TSC hacking on the pipeline and keeping everything dot JS extensions versus changing things to dot TS and the regular TS pipeline plus the lint restrictions. And if that's the case, can we can we can we focus on that as the move the ball forward argument under under review? And you know, can we can we like I don't know, flip a coin like whatever, beat each other up and, and just pick one of those two and move forward. Grant, your hands up. Yes. Uh, it's, I, I'm not really clear on, how, so how are we going to uh, bubble this up? So what, what are those sides? I know we're sort of trying to figure that out right now. I guess, uh, like, so we're going to have a vote on, is that right? Well, uh, th we're, we're, we're trying to figure out the next steps. And I, th I think we're trying our best to keep it within the Java SDK sphere first, as best we can. But if, if, if that completely fails, then it has to bubble up to the full Cloud Events group, I think. Okay. Can, can I ask Lance a question? So like, yeah. if if we had, for example, a vote in the working group that voted for TypeScript support, full TypeScript support, would that would that be respected? Well, keep in mind, oh, Lance, don't answer that yet, because I don't think that'd be the vote. The vote would not be convert the JavaScript SDK to TypeScript. That would not be the vote. The vote would okay. be, do we create a TypeScript SDK? Uh, okay, well, at least I think that's what the vote would be. If we create a TypeScript SDK, then if the vote is uh, denied, what I guess what what is the expectations for the non-majority that uh, uh, want a TypeScript support? I guess so. If for some reason this bubbles up to the Cloud Events SDK, I'm sorry, the, the Cloud Events group for a vote for the TypeScript SDK and the vote fails, then we kill the TypeScript repo and normal GitHub repo process rules apply in terms of when PRs are merged versus rejected. And you guys in the, S, in the Java SDK need to figure out which of the two PRs live on, if either. Okay. Okay, but Lance, I think your hand's up next. Yeah, um, just a couple of things. Uh, John, I, I, I wasn't going to say it the first time, but I have to say it um, the, se the second time you said it. Um, I, I don't think my solution is hacking the TypeScript compiler. Um, it is, you know, a documented way to generate type definitions from, you know, the TypeScript compiler documentation. So it's not hacking. Um, when we talk about TypeScript support, Grant, you mentioned TypeScript support. That's one of the questions I, I'm trying to get to is like, what does TypeScript support mean? Does that mean that for the end user, for the consumer of this SDK, they get the type definitions and, and all of the, the stuff that you have there in your screenshot from the IDE? If that's the case, well, then both of our PRs solve that. And then the last thing is if we go to like the, you know, rename everything to .ts, everything goes through the TypeScript pipeline, uh, but we add these linting rules to ensure that we're 
just using pure JavaScript, like, what does that get us? I don't understand why we would go through that process of a transpilation step before we can publish or we, before we can even, you know, do something in the node CLI to test locally, you know, as we're writing code. Like if we're, if we're just writing pure JavaScript, I don't understand why we would need that transpilation step. Okay, we're running out of time here. So John and then Remy, I think at that point, we're gonna to to probably call it quits. Yeah, so, so yeah, that, like at this point, uh, I'm, I'm agreeing. I, from my, my understanding, like whether you call it a hack or not, fine, that, that, that's on me. But that's why I say, I think that the Grant's original PR and your PR are literally like 48 one way versus 52 the other. I think it's solving this end user issue of types and annotations and code completion support and those sorts of things. Right. So I think the, the forcing function is we should just resolve to pick one of those two as the step to move forward and go from there. Is that possible? Lance and Grant. Does, Grant, does your PR actually provide the uh, core JavaScript enforcement? So I think if we're going to go that route, we should probably make sure that it uh, does include what is up to date in the discussion. My PR simply introduces the TypeScript tooling, um, which Lance also introduces, and it renames one file index.js to index.ts. Just to prove that it's literally the same code, we can add this enforcement if we want to. Um, and developers developing the TypeScript uh, or the JavaScript library will be writing the same code and it won't impact end users at all. That's the difference. Okay. Remy, I think your hand's up next. I'm, I'm assuming Grant, your hand, and Lance, your hand are old. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Yeah, I, I'll try to be quick. It's um, just like I was rereading okay. the, the full thread on uh, the issue nine, and I'm just surprised because I would like to have uh, information from like the old contributors because for now I only see two new contributors that are kind of fighting against each other. Uh, sorry, I'm French. And <laughs> <Don't have. laughs> Like that's the way I feel it. And I I see that there is Fabio Jose that is Brazilian or there is other people that could uh, probably have an ID. And when you look in the thread, I do understand what uh, Grant refers to when he says there was a vote in uh, August uh, 2019, where basically Fabio Jose, who is basically the biggest contributor, was saying, okay, B wins and let's go. So I do understand why there is some frustration from Grant now. Like maybe I didn't read enough before. But uh, it's just, it looks like they, they found the solution together just inside that repo and then it was brought to that, that broader audience. So like, again, I, at the end, do whatever. I, if I can contribute, it's fine. But I'm not consider myself as the main contributor. So but it's just the other contributor, I would like to have understand what is their opinion, because it's not only Lens or Grant who contribute to that repository. Most of that repository was not even built by his own. So I'm surprised. Yeah. So Grant, I apologize. It sounds like your hand wasn't old. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's okay. I've, I've been uh, raising my hand. So yeah, Fabio, uh, he just cr committed to master uh, hundreds of PR, uh, commits. Um, and as you can see in the original issue nine, uh, he is okay with converting to TypeScript after voting. Um, I don't, I've talked to him on Slack a bit. Uh, he sort of seemed indifferent. Um, and that's that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know why he doesn't uh, contribute anymore. And, and now, yet, yeah, I feel like it's uh, me and Lance talking. Okay, so is it possible 
to come to a resolution on those two PRs in question before end of day Wednesday next week. Either merge one of them, find a new solution, it merges the two of them, kill both of them. Is it possible to resolve those two PRs before Wednesday? Because to me, if you could resolve those two PRs, either accept or, or, or reject one or both of them, then that would be the answer of the SDK, right? Either you found a solution that you could both live with, or you could not find a solution, and then things are gonna bubble up to the full Cloud Events Working Group for a decision. I mean, like, I, I created a PR seven days ago that introduces TypeScript in the least possible way after talking and, and basically uh, after request of, well, just show me the code rather than talk about it uh, from Lance. And I don't know why, like, I mean, it was a review, I guess, 21 hours ago. Um, but then a uh, different PR conflicts with it from Lance. And like both, like if, if you want me to just close my PR and go with Lance, it's a step forward, but I don't like, there's no, some that, politics or some, I don't know what. No, what's so, so let me, let me clear. I, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the, the process of okay. uh, right, that stuff. Okay. I, what I'm asking for is from you guys on the call or the uh, people in the SDK group itself to, to find a way forward here or come back and say, we can't, and therefore we toss our hands up and now it's for the work, it's for the CE group to decide. And, I, and if you guys can come to a resolution on those two PRs by next Wednesday, I think that's going to lead to the next step in the process. Either you came to a resolution and a PR was merged and you're both happy, great, then there's nothing else to be done. But if both PRs are rejected and the issue is still there and Grant, you still wanna have a TypeScript SDK, then okay, then the CE group will vote on whether the SDK, a new SDK should be created or not. I'm just asking for you guys, whether it's you two or the group at large to go off and by next Wednesday, try to come up with a resolution. Because by next Thursday, I wanna have a vote if, if a vote is necessary and be done with this. I know it's, that's blunt, but I, 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 don't think we, I don't think it's fair to anybody to let this thing linger on for much longer, especially when I don't hear either side necessarily moving. Okay, well, I, I don't think, given the introduction of a new PR yesterday, that the intention of cooperating, um, and so I don't think there'll be any progress. Okay, Lance, you're up. So, I mean, <clears throat> I guess, I, guess I, don't, I, I don't feel that's very accurate. I, I think that PR actually is a representation of my ability to compromise. Uh, and my, m m the fact that I've, I've learned things over the last couple of weeks about, uh, about what TypeScript can bring to an end user. And I feel like it creates that end user experience that we want while avoiding the potential alienation of me and one or two of my colleagues who are also contributing to this repository. So in terms of finding a middle ground, I honestly feel like I've taken a few steps towards that middle ground um, and, and have even stated in the PR and in other threads that this is a possible path towards full conversion to TypeScript. But I personally am not ready to do that right now. Um, I'd like to see you, Grant, take one or two steps towards the middle ground. So, okay, we're over time. I think we need to end All it. Right. Let me, let me just right. say, uh, <laughs> Can you guys, I know it's gonna be painful to ask <laughs> because, because I know there are strong feelings on both sides, but can you guys please try to have some offline conversations and I don't mean through GitHub issues. I mean like voice communications to see if you can understand each other's position better, find that middle ground or, or something. Cause I just feel like if nothing else, at least a voice communication will at least have faster communication turnaround than, than going through GitHub issues and see if you can find that, that middle ground position. Because, I mean, for all I know, John is right. You, you, you guys really aren't that far apart, but for some reason you're not seeing it. I don't know. We're not that far apart. I've taken a bunch of steps towards Grant's position. Well, okay, so, that, so, that, so can you guys 
take it offline and see what you can do in terms of, you know, working or trying to, 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 to come to a resolution. I know Grant, this has been very frustrating. And, and there have been several times when you said, you know, you're, you're done, you, you, you're, 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 you're frustrated. And I get that, but as painful as it is, if, if you can possibly come to a compromise on both sides to, that you can both live with, not saying it's ideal, but it's a, you can at least live with to see how it plays out. And maybe one or both of you will be surprised that, hey, it actually isn't as bad as you thought it was gonna be. That, that might be the better solution than creating a whole other repository right off the bat. I agree. I, I don't think we should create another repository. Well, yeah, but- I mean, <laughs> what do you need for you to say? Say it again, okay. Brian? Uh, it's easy for Lance to say that we shouldn't. I mean, I, I don't think we should either, but I, I'm literally blocked and I can't answer my product manager and figure out a dozen other issues uh, with this blockage. Okay. So, damn, I really need to go to another call. Lance and I just, you can get to a different call. I don't know if there's anybody else here. Uh, we can just talk. Yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys th this, this Zoom will keep going. So you guys, if you're free, you know, keep talking, but please find some way to talk offline if you can, if, if not on this call right here, but try to find that middle ground if you can. And then I'll, I'll, I'll ping you guys offline later, either today or tomorrow to see what happened and see if anything was made in terms of progress. Right. Thanks a lot, yep. Appreciate okay. it. Bye, Bye guys. Good. Yeah, good luck. Bye-bye. <laughs> so Grant, are you sticking around? Uh, yeah, I can stick around. Um, if I I'm, can interrupt, I plan to stick around for a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I do think that uh, Lance is correct. I think that uh, what his PR represents is his understanding of, of some of the compromise uh, ground that's been discussed. And and certainly, I, I uh, it's it's clear, uh, sorry, uh, Grant, that that's not your preferred. Um, I. I uh, but it does make concrete and uh, specific what it is that, that we have been discussing in the threads. Um, and, and whether it's the right option is separate. And, uh, but I, I think that is, I think basically Lance has been showing good, good faith. So uh, I'll just start by, by saying the concerns that I have with, and these are all things that we've said before, but I just want to say them vocally. The concerns that I have with moving fully to TypeScript right now are that myself and other Red Hat developers are not TypeScript developers. Uh, and whether we, and, and if we say that, okay, well, you can still just write pure JavaScript and we're, and we're going to enforce that with linting rules, then I, I don't understand what the whole point is of running the transpiler to convert JavaScript to JavaScript. I mean, I've said that a number of times on this call. Um, for me, at least as far as I understand it, the, the big concern is the end user experience. Um, and I don't really, I'm not clear, I think that what I've proposed is, gets us to the same end user experience and is a step towards getting what you want, Grant. It just doesn't mean it's happening tomorrow. Yeah, so, I mean, it's definitely an improvement. Again, I, I think one of the issues was I proposed sort of the same improvement seven days ago, and then I didn't know exactly, like, well, seven days ago, I mean, I clearly and still have some issues with that repository. And I felt like I wanted to express what I thought might be a good compromise through my PR. And I mean, come on, submitting PRs is like that may or may not conflict with other PRs. That's just open source programming. That just happens. Like, this is not like. <laughs> yeah, I, that's understandable. But like, like I. I I feel like this is just going to lead to more issues if if there's a situation where just because you're not 
familiar with the tooling or are, are making a lot of uh, learning a lot from the tooling it doesn't mean that you have to sort of hijack the initial step of getting TypeScript support and, and not accept PRs. Well, when you say TypeScript right. support, what do you mean? Are you talking about for the end user? I, I don't think that you're representing my position in good faith again. I am absolutely trying to provide TypeScript support. If I might, uh, from the uh, repository's uh, standpoint, especially because it's the official repository of the group, um, the great. Now my head cleared when I was about to say what I what was important. Um, the the point is not actually about uh, Lance. Um, Lance is a convenient uh, voice and, uh, and an advocate, but. It really is about the far larger uh, set of uh, JavaScript developers that don't feel comfortable using TypeScript. Now, I, I've been pretty mum about it, but uh, personally, if I were uh, uh, to, to make this decision for myself, I would go with TypeScript. Um, I'm comfortable changing languages and done it a lot, and I feel like every one I learn, I, I learn a lot of new things. So uh, that's where I'm coming from. But, but I think it's not a, a small point that a uh, number of developers who might become contributors would feel excluded if they came into the repository and saw something that just, that just wasn't part of their wheelhouse, wasn't comfortable and familiar to them. Now, that uh, is not the greatest way to make decisions, but it's also a very pragmatic concern. And I, I got to say that of the things that has surprised and delighted me the most in getting into the JavaScript uh, ecosystem is the deep level of pragmatism that is present. Um, just the amount of cruft that the community is willing to put up with in terms of all the, you know, back in the day, uh, detecting what browser and then writing different code lines and uh, for, for dealing with certain things in different browsers and just all of that garbage that um, you just never had to deal with in, in more typed spaces. Um, it, it's been a space of bad compromises and a lot of pragmatism and that pragmatism has created a lot of value and clearly there's a lot of, uh, you know, at stake and, and, or, I don't know, revenue and everything else in the, in the way, uh, that has led to that. But, uh, it, it would be a big thing to, to say that that community is not, um, of it, uh, welcome. But, but I think if I may. <laughs> Uh, the uh, switching to TypeScript doesn't exclude the JavaScript developers. Like in my opinion, it's not the case. And we are like I hear you referring to like potential contributors. Like basically, if I had a preference, if I see the two peer, not, I, I'm sorry to it's not gonna be nice. I don't have a nice way to say that, but. The lens contribution is not as sexy, is it's not really clean. So if I come as like a contributor, I will be less inclined to join the repository because for me it's less clean. Uh, maybe it's I'm the it's just my own opinion, so I don't want to say that uh, I'm not claiming or present anybody else. It's just I'm more inclined to work on a clean repository than something that start hacking uh, because it's kind of a hack. It's still kind of a hack. Uh, and it doesn't have the feeling that it's a clean repository. What do you mean by clean? That's like, what, that's what would you change? Like, uh, what I will say clean, it's, it's really not like, I don't want to, to say that I'm the one knowing what is clean or not, because I think it's really a subjective opinion. But when you look at other projects like TypeScript and JavaScript project, the way they are, um, what you expect to see in a repository, the, I, it's not gonna match exactly with your PR because I will not expect to see those kind of hack for TypeScript. It's not natural to me. Like if you look on the other TypeScript or JavaScript project I know, so again, like I'm, I'm not pretending I know all the projects, but it doesn't, it doesn't have the feeling to be like cutting edge repository and that's, just my opinion again like uh, is that is that because it's the 
this PR specifically is is just generating type definitions and we're not dealing with it or is that the like layout of the repository and code choices and things like that it's a bit of both and again like I didn't contribute so like I don't want to uh, like I would not specifically like myself if I were you uh, in what I'm saying <laughs> so, uh, because it's I'm in a weird position I haven't contributed yet I'm trying to understand I'm trying to help but uh, without contributing uh, it's, my position is a bit weird it's just yeah like I, I was looking at the PR that Gwen did and uh, it had more that feeling so that's I'm that's why I uh, express my preference there. Well, I would agree with you in terms of how, you know, the repository is laid out and some of the choices in the implementation. Um, uh, you know, I, I would have made different choices if I had written that back when it was first started a year ago. Um, and I hear the fact that you, you know, obviously prefer a TypeScript project. Again, I'll just say like, I'm not 100% comfortable with it and I'm proposing this as an alternative possible step towards moving in that direction while at the same time trying to solve the concerns for the end user. Yeah, what I'm amazed, to be honest, uh, like the following this the call and thing like that is I think uh, you have like a good community. Like if you have issue you with TypeScript, I don't think that Grant will say like, I'm not going to explain you the few things that I need to explain. Or even myself, I can spend a bit of time to, to do the same kind of thing. So if you think as a team and not as an individual, I think the team could do and like the migration to TypeScript and do it efficiently with help. So that doesn't mean that you can do it on your own, but I don't think that you will be on your own. That, that was, that's the feeling I get from those calls is I'm quite surprised. Like there is a good community and like people speak together. So I would expect you to be able to reach for some help if you need some. Absolutely. I mean, I think so. I, I also, think that I would like to take it slowly. Um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe I'm being irrational, but again, like I said a few minutes ago, I, I, I do feel like I've made a lot of concessions and, and tried to take steps towards the middle ground. And I am speaking to some extent for my colleague Helio, who has no experience with TypeScript and, and has expressed reservations. And, um, you know, I, that's just where I'm coming from. Yeah, I I definitely feel you, Lance. Like there didn't exist this TypeScript thing, and like most languages and new technologies, uh, I and lots of people don't like adopting them without a very good reason or looking at them. Um, and I really appreciate all the different levels of conversation and even using some of the TypeScript, like legacy tooling of generating types from JavaScript. Um, I mean, it's not, I shouldn't say legacy, but it's uh, less conventional um, these days. Um, but I, I'd really like to, I mean, I know you thought you're uh, a large contributor contributor, but I'd really like to um, take like the end users in perspective and and just like I feel like it's it's very useful to just remove yourself from the conversation or re remove yourself from like the PRs. Like software is literally like five years from now it doesn't really matter who as an end user who wrote the software. Um, like for me, this highly affects my work because I'm trying to support a product launch of an event system at Google and JavaScript is the most popular language and I literally can't do that. And I know we're getting there, um, but I feel like, especially with the most recent PR that 
there like there's an unwillingness to work on a PR together. I I I and I but I'll just create more and more conflicts. If I mean I can go and close my PR and and like say okay yours looks good but like it's just creating it's creating a really unhealthy relationship and I feel like I, I have so much I could help contribute and and the people that I know at my company that can contribute to this project but if if there's a resistance to just like learning TypeScript or or accepting PRs or uh, making progress in a timely matter like I, I really need to spend my time elsewhere and focus on other languages. So I guess, you know, um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of have a lot of questions. Like, um, it, it sounds to me from, from what you're saying that, that the expectation would be not actually to have to restrict it using lenting rules to uh, pure JavaScript. I, no, all, all, I think it's really, it's most important to work with all contributors and make everybody feel comfortable. I don't think it'd be wise. I mean, I, I could like create a private repository and have my TypeScript SDK and just create PRs for that. But I don't think that's going to be really wise, especially for the community. I, I really have technical, um, a technical reservation. I don't think that these added extra lip. I mean, we can definitely enforce the ju just use JavaScript, but rename to TS so we get all the extra tooling and goodness with that. What is that tooling? It's TSC. And uh, it's uh, Visual Studio Code with the language server that understands the file type uh, .ts. And so how does the generation of type definitions not get us there? Uh, well, the generation of type definitions, you won't have types. Um, it, it won't be with JavaScript, you uh, does not infer types, but with TypeScript, you can infer types, and that's really useful for auto completion um, for JavaScript or TypeScript developers. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see that because basically everything I've seen is that using VS Code and uh, and type definitions in this repository gets me all the way there. And maybe I'm missing some other thing that m my IDE might be able to do if I'm... So yeah, VS Code, VS Code is written in TypeScript, but for the language server for VS Code, it will do the very best. It'll basically, in the background, rename your, your uh, JavaScript to TypeScript because all uh, TypeScript is valid JavaScript and there's extra tooling. And it'll, it'll provide a very similar IDE experience, if, even if you use the .js extension. I, I guess I still don't understand what the benefit, like if you've got the type definitions, like to the end user, what is the, like, <laughs> to me, it sounds like what we're arguing about is uh, what the SDK maintainer experience is, because I don't, I have, I have yet to be clear on what the end user experience, how it would change if we uh, did more okay. than type definitions. Lance, you're you're right. You're, if if everything's perfect, it's all you're doing at the end of the day is just running some JavaScript in Node. 
but there's your unless you have you show me a, an excellent case study of someone using this I mean I've I've said it and I'll still say it like other people have said it like the hacky solution of using TSC for compiling JavaScript and and using the legacy auto completion and and not ideal uh, tooling for just pure JavaScript. If you provide the same developer experience, that's great. The easiest way to get that developer experience is just to rename our, our files to .ts. We can cool. add and like read-only fields and like all, all sorts of great extensions that are beneficial um, that use TypeScript features at a later point if we really want to, to provide be even better tooling. But, but I, I literally don't see, like, like show me any company or any, like, like every, pretty much every company, major company uses JavaScript. Show me any company that uses this, uh, this other just JS way of uh, enforcing um, types and, and just pure JavaScript and create such, creates a modern IDE. I, I, I just don't know of any tooling like that. I, I'm really confused to be honest. I mean, like it, it sounds like we're talking in circles. I, like you keep saying legacy. I mean, I wouldn't, <laughs> Whatever. If we get the same experience for the end user using type definitions, why is that bad? If, if, so I'll, I'll say this again. Like, it's the same. You'll get, if you can magically create an SDK that has uh, the type definitions. There is no difference. You're right. But it's not magic. I mean, it's there. It's t I'm doing it right now. It's already happening. And what you said about like changing your file names to .ts, I mean, that's doing exactly the same thing, right? It's generating type definitions from those .ts files. And then you transpile JavaScript from JavaScript to JavaScript, which seems silly to me. If we take the first step that it, that the TSC does in your implementation, which is generating those type definitions and stop there, can't that just be a, like a step along this continuum? Yeah, I mean, they're both, they're both, both ways are steps, but you're just taking, like you need two steps rather than my solution just needs one step. Well, your solution needs two steps in other scenarios, right? In order to, to like run yeah, my... Like, like literally you can just ask the TypeScript authors what they recommend. Uh, if nine out of 10 of them will recommend us using TypeScript. Like, I don't know, why are we using the tooling but not the actual language? Like, that's, that's because you demanded that we cool. needed to have type definitions. And I agree, like, it's fine, it's great. We wanna work with TypeScript. I don't understand why you can't accept a step in that direction. A step. Okay, no, I, I said I can go and close my PR and just approve yours and, or I could just ab abandon any involvement in this project. But that's not going to be ideal. Like there, there are other issues besides TypeScript definitions in this project. I One is just agree, and the, I've been trying to fix them for three the, weeks and not have this argument. Yeah, I, well, the, I, this SDK has been around for two years, and I didn't get involved because there are commitments to master, and. I, I don't, I mean, I, I can, like, if you say, Lance, like, 
all these other issues will be solved and I'll be able to figure out that definition. My like, and you provided that to end users by like next quarter, like, and I just abandoned being involved in these discussions then, and I'd be happy. Like, I mean, as like, I understand you, your willingness to to be able to adapt these definition um, that'll and that'll satisfy the end user's need if I'm a contributor which I hope to be able to like make any contributions um, any developer experience improvements in the next year it'll be a lot harder for me to just like It'll just be a lot more code, and I don't know if all the extra tooling will be great because it's not as maintained um, for like JS doc. Uh, and so it's just a bit more of a rip. And I, that was I have a piece of ignorance there. Is, is there an alternative to JS doc for providing that kind of IntelliSense uh, knowledge about how to use something in its semantics? Well, I don't think JS doc is providing the IntelliSense. I think what's happening is, and I could be wrong, Grant, you can correct me if I am. Um, I, I believe that TSC is using the JS docs to help it infer types. If the JS docs aren't there, it'll still try to make inferences. But the JS docs help to uh, sort of solidify the the inferences that it's making. I think. And oh, and your question was about is there an alternative? No, not really. I mean, the the code documentation ecosystem in JavaScript is not great. Or to answer just the generic question about uh, type definitions in JS doc, I don't. I would guess that JS doc does not affect the type definition. Um, I think the type definitions are just inferred by the usage um, of the JavaScript within the library. But I'm not sure. Like if you write, if you just, because like a type uh, of, a single uh, like attribute can have like multiple types, and if you only have like if you mess up your doc or like forget like oh, this can be a string and a number, um, that will be uh, I guess that'll just be either inferred from your code or the JS doc. And go into the type definition. Anyways, I hope, I hope that added something to the conversation. Thank you. All right, one concern, this is definitely a developer concern, but um, that I don't understand how we're going to solve is how are we going to enforce the to make sure that JS doc is right, a hundred percent right, basically. There's some tooling I think you mentioned that we can do that. Like, how does how do we even like that? That's very TypeScript, like. TypeScript tooling enforces type definitions all the way down. Or type uh, types, I guess, all the way down. Sorry, was that a question? It, yeah. So I guess uh, Lance, like how? So we're we're planning to use JS doc, right? Well, we already are. I mean, JS doc runs in the well, we're planning to specifically we're planning to use JS doc to generate TypeScript definitions. No, we're using TSC to generate type definitions. 
but you mentioned that TSC might use the JS doc. Is that right? I think that TSC might uh, use the JS doc to help it make inferences if it's if it's not clear in the code, or maybe it starts with the JS doc. I, I don't know. I don't have that branch checked out on my repo right now. I've got some in flight work, so I can't test it at the moment. But um, if I recall correctly, you like you change the type in the um, JS doc and uh, and but don't change the you know the code um, type. TSC will complain, but I need to confirm that. Okay. Um. Well, so then the question to follow up with you, Grant, then if, if uh, in a pure TypeScript environment, are docs written in a TypeScript specific uh, format, right? Or is this JS doc really an orthogonal issue? Not that, I mean, JS doc is used in TypeScript. There's really not that many differences between TypeScript and JavaScript. Yeah, that, that's my that's my understanding, right? From what I've done, but that's that's my question, right? It, it, because I, what it, I guess my what I'm trying to get to is teasing apart, like, okay, if the JS doc is really just a documentation issue, right? Then you know we can sort of get rid of more more of this extraneous things to try and cleave to, you know, what, what's the real distinction benefit of one side of this line or the other? All right. One, one of the issues is like, so with, with JS doc, with TypeScript, you do not have to an annotate the types because it's automatically inferred by the tooling. That's one great benefit where you can have uh, less code, less comments, and have the tooling just automatically work, and it'll and it'll work um, at like when you're writing your code, such that yeah. you're trying to call two string on a uh, well, calling like. Well, so let me jump into that, right? So cause again, I I don't use VS Code with JavaScript, so is is this sort of the difference of hey we're we're using Lance's approach is using the TSC compiler and first stage or whatever to, to, to get that information, but it's basically a batch process versus VS Code is doing it fully dynamically as you're as you're going. Right? Is that is that a difference in the uh, experience? Um, well, you can you can generate the types. Uh, I mean, again, the issue is sort of while while you're developing the SDK, if you, um, I mean, the end user will eventually get just the compiled TypeScript definitions and the node module such that it won't make a difference. Um, but I, I'm I'm not super familiar with writing, actually just writing JavaScript anymore with the IDE experience, but but with writing TypeScript, you'll get, um, well, first you'll get enforced types. Um, it'll always be accurate. Like, so if you mess up a JS doc, it'll never, JS doc comment, like it doesn't use those, it uses um, the, the types directly from the source code, not from the cons. Um, you were mentioning that VS Code is basically internally translating, or you know, whatever, however it does it internally, uh, it's it's IR or whatever, it's using the JavaScript as as TypeScript from its perspective, even if it's looking at a, at a .js file. Right, so that's why I'm trying to get to well, what's the what's the difference in the in that experience, right? Is it is it inhibiting you from you know is it inhibiting VS Code as the example from doing refactorings 
um, just because it's a difference in the extension of the file, right? Or, or is it going to do the same inference anyway? Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar exactly with what features there are with JavaScript, actually. So I haven't written, I usually write TypeScript, but you can do refactorings like uh, rename a member field throughout the file, throughout all the tests, everywhere. Um, and they'll always be completely accurate. You can move classes, you can move functions, um, all because uh, your code can be statically type, uh, checked. I don't think up a little bit from the JavaScript experience on this particular uh, subject because refactoring is kind of one of the big pieces that TypeScript seems to pull ahead on. And um, the, the difference is in JavaScript, you'll probably get a pretty good refactoring, um, but it's possible that there will be mistakes and you should check that and t take a look at where it's uh, the IDE is suggesting changes should be made because they will not always be correct. And right. a lot of the time it's based on string searches. Right. Whereas with TypeScript, you get a guarantee that it will be correct because it knows exactly. Well, so let me, let me dump into that. That that's if you're using the, that, that's if you're using TypeScript for, for actually typing, right? So, if you're writing just plain raw JavaScript code without the types, right, in a file that's .js versus .ts, like, doesn't have the extra information. Is that correct? Right? It's still going to be doing the same, it's still going to be doing the same analysis because it doesn't have the extra uh, type annotations. That's how I understand it. Which is, which is kind of why, like, I'm reluctant to, to go with Grant's PR because it seems to me that, um, that, that his and mine both achieved the same thing, but that, um, at, at least initially, like, I don't see that there's any, any improvement in change or any benefit to changing to .ts files unless you plan to use the TypeScript superset of, you know, the language. Um, and, you know, I thought that we had talked about not doing that, that keep, okay. keeping- Okay, I, I, I see. Yeah. So, so let, me, let, me, let me ask you, Lance, a, 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 a timeline question, right? Because part, part of your thing is, hey, it takes time to learn TypeScript and all of that. Right, it, or, or I don't know how to ask this in a more neutral way. So forgive me. It is, it is, is your is is your the 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 group of developers that you're representing, right? It, it is the is the is the long term concern. Let me state it that way, right? So think think a year from now, right? Are are you are are you uh, are you open to evolving the 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 SDK code base over some longer period of time to start adding more of these extra features, assuming that they're good and useful and all of that, right? Right? Or is it more of a we 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 want to keep it pure JavaScript forever, or you know in, indefinitely? Some uh, so I guess I would say I mean I've I've said in the um, in the PR that that I see this as a possible step towards a transition to full TypeScript. Yeah. But I keep saying possible step because I'm open to it. Um, but I, you know I'm I, I can't say right now. Yes, absolutely. I'm gonna once I get all this. You know the the type interfaces and stuff figured out the superset of the language and I learned that and I'm comfortable with it, then great. I, you know, I'll, I'll move in that direction. Um, yeah. I, I mean, th does that answer your question? Well, so I, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm trying to tease, tease into, you know, a, a, whatever you want to call it, a philosophical foundation, right? There's some, there's some people who are like, whatever the language is. I'm a C programmer and I'm going to use C++, 
right? And and you know, then they go to work for some place that is using C plus plus, but just some very specific subset, right? And they're okay with that, but they're not going to do all the you know runtime insanity in C plus plus that kind of thing, right? So there's there's that, that there's that kind of middle ground versus hey, you know, it's just a matter of time. We can see the benefit. We can see the the TypeScript community is kind of you know eating eating the JavaScript world because it really is fixing some problems or whatever. And, and, and our issue is really just we don't have the time, um, and you know, and we're not experts, and so we don't want to just jump into it. I, I guess is what I'm trying to tease tease apart. Well, I'll speak for myself personally. The um, and, and it kind of goes to the the comment I made very early on in this call is that I feel like I've been extremely productive over the last three weeks. And uh, I, I think if we start introducing things like interfaces and stuff like that, that's going to slow me down pretty dramatically. Um, if we start introduce, introducing that stuff immediately. Um, Okay. I'm, I'm not a, you know, I like I have JavaScript is not the only language I've ever worked in. I've switched programming languages a lot. You know, I've done Java, I've done C++, I've done Perl, I've done JavaScript. I mean, I, I'm not afraid of new languages. Um, I don't particularly like TypeScript. I don't like the way it looks. I like JavaScript for the, you know, dynamic nature of it, the loose typing. Um, but I get it. Other people like strong typing, and that's great. Um, I, you know, just because I don't like it doesn't mean it can't be a part of the project. Um, right. So, so then let me let me put in another hypothetical, right? So, so let let's let let's let's uh, hypothetically let's start with okay. So you have this this PR with the JS doc and using TSC or whatever, and we we. We go with that, right? And then three months from now, or whatever, right? Some not too distant future, somebody comes in um, a PR that has some of these early things where they've done all the work. Some of these early things. What do you mean? Whatever uh, like interface definitions, adding uh, okay. more typing, yeah. right? Whatever you know, some some you know where it doesn't completely wholesale change the, 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 the JavaScript, but it's at, it, it, let's call it additive, right? Where it's adding some capabilities and they've gone in and cleaned up and, and they've, they're, they're already TypeScript experts and they've done all the work. They've added tests, so it's all, it's all verified and tested, right? And it's three months from now. What, what do you, what, what's your, What's your take on that? And let me make sure I understand the scenario. Sure. So we've, we've merged my compromise PR. Yep. And we're not actually doing transpilation step. We're just doing type definition generation. Today, yes. Today. For tomorrow. Uh, three months from now, somebody comes in with PR that has a TypeScript interface and also modifies the build pipeline <clears throat> so that you know it's working that way. Right. Um, and they've done all the work, right? And they've tested it, and you know, all of that kind of stuff, right? So they're they're not they're they're not burdening you, right, with any of that extra work uh, to make that to make that PR. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say in a hypothetical. Um, if it's somebody coming in from the outside who's not a maintainer and won't necessarily stick around to maintain it, yeah. then that might be a little um, questionable. That's Okay, well, so then let me let me embellish the hypothetical and say that it's Grant or Grant team, right? That they're using it for a product. So you have some, you have at least as as good as most anybody else, right? That they're gonna they're gonna support that for for a reasonable amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. And they they know what they're doing, right? That like their people have a clue. They're 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 committed and and. You know they're willing to willing to back what they did. Yeah, I mean, and if if they could help me understand what benefit it brings, 
either to the end user or the SDK developer without imposing burden, then I, yeah, I mean, I'm a reasonable person. I know it may not seem that way based on some of the online discussions, uh, but <laughs> um, I hope that my actions in trying to compromise here sort of uh, illustrate that I, I'm not like unwilling to bend. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to help, right? Because there's, yeah. you know, there's, 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 you know, there's obviously some, 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 some tension, right? So I'm, you know, trying to use the hypothetical to try and give some, give some flavor to that, you know, to, to in that sense, both, both camps. That a decision today is not, is not like, okay, now we're in a strict jacket and we're stating this as, okay, this is now the policy forever. Right. For the sake of establishing a philosophical basis, I, I think it might be also important to ask the related question, which I think uh, Lance has already commented on. If this uh, repo was written in type, say this hypothetical grant to yeah. uh, wrote this beautiful PR, it was a very one well done, you know, all the support long term uh, committed, um, and that was merged. Uh, if a Lance 2 came along, having been uh, steeped only in JavaScript and um, was looking at the repo and thinking about making a uh, contribution with that, uh, would Lance 2 be willing to kind of absorb some of the new environment and constructs in order to make that contribution? Yeah. Great. That's a question for me. Would I be willing to absorb? Is that a question? Well, I, I think, I mean, uh, given my willingness to flex on all these things, I, I don't think I can make a good assertion because I'd be fine. Um, but certainly, uh, given the, the stance that you've uh, certainly started with and uh, as it's evolved, um, I think you could probably speak to the, the more general case with more authority than certainly I can. Uh, I know that if I had come to this you know, a month ago and it was all in TypeScript. I mean, I only did come to this like a month ago. So, and it if it were all in TypeScript, I would, um, I would probably not have contributed. I don't know. It really depends. I mean, it's like we too are using this in a potential product down the line. Uh, we being Red Hat. Um, and so it may be that I, that I would have had to uh, just because we need to use it. Um, but I would have been reluctant. I mean, I'm not a TypeScript developer. When I look at early in the thread um, about the TypeScript types thread, number nine on the issues, uh, Grant, you um, linked to the, you know, a Google interface for pod events. And, uh, you know, that's just, like, I looked at that and I was like, hey, that's not JavaScript. That's not what I'm comfortable with. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. I guess in the general case, yeah. I mean, obviously, in the last three weeks, I've evolved, and um, and uh, yeah. I mean, Lance, what you? I'd say you didn't have to. Well, I mean, the the interface is because we don't have a an SDK that that has uh, any like usability with cloud functions. Um, but if we like, if, if you personally like never had to, uh, work with any TypeScript features, like would you be willing to, I mean, I, I know you're making lots of compromises, but what, would you be willing to, uh, be supportive of that, um, that file, for example, or that feature within the repo? Well, I mean, yeah, I suppose, but I, like the truth is like, if I'm working on a repo, I would want to be able to like actually understand everything and, and work on it. And I think that's why uh, to some degree, I'm just saying, can we take it slow? Right. I like my fear when I look at your PR, my fear is, oh my God, everything's going to be changed to dot TS. And then I'm not going to have any ability to contribute to this. And because we don't already have rules in place to say, it has to be pure JavaScript. Well, then, it, you know, I can't control whether or not 
somebody is writing TypeScript because the linter doesn't pick that up. And so, um, so let, let's go, let's go over the peers like one by one. So like, I mean, what, like if, if the PR included uh, the linter that enforced just pure ES6, no TypeScript, like what would that be like welcome? Well, and that's, that gets me back to my question of like, okay, so why? Because if we're okay. transpiling pure yeah, yeah, JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me jump in. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. If we're transpiling JavaScript to JavaScript, you know, that doesn't seem to make any sense. And the first step of that is it taking that JavaScript and generating type definitions, whether it's just stopping there or continuing on. It just, I like, I, no, no, I get it. Yeah. Right. So, so, so that, so that's where I'm was bringing up the hypothetical, right? Because so, so that we stop micro over myopically focusing on just a point in time, look at this over an evolution of time. Right. So, so, so put aside the, is, is it actually different in this point of time decision? Right. If the, if a good chunk of the community, which various people have brought up, you know, uh, at least support for uh, adding TypeScript over time, right, into the repo, right, then, then if, if, if that's directionally where it's going to go, right, then, then it doesn't really matter in this point of time, right? Like, great, we, we change it. Yes, it's, you know, maybe it's, it, it's, it's a waste of, you know, it's an extra step or whatever, which is a separate piece that, that personally I don't really care about. It, it's, it's more of, you know, like again, my, in my example, okay, three months from now, there's some cool feature that, uh, again, for example, Grant's team comes up with and takes advantage of some TypeScript piece that they just slide right in, they do all the work and you know, they don't go crazy, <laughs> right? Because they're sensitive to, hey, there's other maintainers on the group or whatever, right? That they don't, they, they don't do the, the you know, born again uh, C++ psycho uh, step, um, right? So, I mean, if we look at this as an evolutionary process over, over a longer period of time, I, I, I think the, the distinction of well, taking the step and and doing the linter and i think it was maybe remy or eric who made a comment earlier oh it was remy because uh, he was talking about french right the it doesn't his comment about cleanliness or it looks like a a standard approach and the tools if i just come in and look at the repo as a newbie or whatever it it looks more it looks more like what i would expect or that that kind of stuff Maybe that's an issue for some people, maybe not. I don't, you know, I don't know. I, and I know I'm not a good example <laughs> um, for that. But I, but I think if, if, you know, if we can kind of shift our view to be more evolutionary, then, then maybe that helps contextualize things um, a, a little better. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Um, did you, was there a question though? <laughs> no, I mean, it's more of, if that's the case, right, then it's another one of these, right, I go, I keep going back to, to me, it, it really looks like, you know, 4852, right? It, it, I don't, I don't see, I don't see, uh, you know, maybe there's some edge cases in this, you know, particular tooling or this particular thing one way or the other. But if, if, if I'm understanding Grant, uh, and what he said a, a, a few times is, you know, they'd be willing to start uh, with the, the, the uh, you know, the lint rules and maybe the lint rules don't pick up everything and something sneaks in and, you know, that'll get caught in, in a PR or, you know, review. Um, if, if that's the case and we, and we know the, the directionally, you know, uh, the, the, at least most of the people we've heard of talking uh, at least support uh, you know, some kind of uh, eventual evolution to more TypeScript features, then, then that 4852 decision right now at this point in time doesn't, doesn't seem, it, it, you know, it, it, it doesn't seem like a, a fight worth having. Okay. 
I'll take that under consideration. I think I need to stop having the conversation right now. We've been at it for three hours and it's 3 p.m. my time. I haven't had lunch yet. I'm starting to feel a little weak. Um, uh, I think this has actually been a lot more productive than the stuff on GitHub. Um, can I, well, so, so can I propose? Because like, yeah, obviously people need to sleep on it and think about it. Yeah. Like, given that it's Thursday, is something that we, you know, like help to schedule another call some Monday, for example, that gives people some time to, to think on things, you know, go hack some stuff to, to or go, to, you know, do some checking and some experiments or whatever they need to do. And then we come back on, uh, on Monday. Uh, that's a, a good suggestion. Um, yeah, that would work with me on free Monday. Okay. Just to be a little awkward, uh, thank you everyone for the, the tone of uh, voice and uh, conversation uh, today. I really appreciate that everyone's been really civil. Um, these things Absolutely. are hard to deal with in space of conflict. So, Absolutely. thanks. Yeah, well, yep. thank thanks both everyone. John for sticking around and help mediate. Uh, absolutely. Well, my pleasure. Um, so why don't, uh, unless unless everybody has a, a known time right now, why don't why don't we just, uh, figure out a schedule on Slack? Um, you know, over the, over today, later today or whatever, and you know, we'll just use the same Zoom uh, Zoom uh, channel for the discussion on Monday. Does that uh, does that sound reasonable? Sounds great. Sounds good. Do you want to uh, send the message, John? To everyone in Slack? Well, fine. Make it be responsible. Yes, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that after <laughs> I <email. laughs> Okay. Very uh, much appreciated. Thanks for the discussion. I really appreciate everyone sticking yeah. around. Yeah. Thanks. Take care. Right. Have great days and lunches. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye.